Thank you for watching. Thank you.
Welcome to Infinite Pigsis. Your place to discuss all the current and past games you enjoy. We hope you enjoy the show and can join us. We will see you in the chat box. To get on the show, follow the Discord link. Join up, read the rules in the welcome channel. When you have read them put a check mark reaction to the rules. After you have done that head to underscore infinite pixis info underscore and follow the pinned instructions. Then jump into the waiting room and we will get you on when we can. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you there. We will be starting shortly. Enjoy this track by Wiljan Zandra. It is called Woodlands.
Hello and welcome to Infinite Pixus. This is Infinite Gamer. I'd like to thank you all for coming along. Hope you enjoy the show and hopefully we'll have a few callers in with us today. I'll now pass you over to uh, Alpha Pixus. Hello guys, I'm Alpha Pixus. Welcome to Infinite Pixus, our little talk show that we threw together over a week's period. <laughs> a hell of a week. But uh, we hope that you enjoy what we're going to be doing here. And uh, now we're both probably going to speak and, you know, play some games and see how the show goes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Let's see how this uh, first stream goes then. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> we did. We had, what, thumbnails, overlays, OBS uh, stuff to sort out. Chat stuff to sort oh, yeah. out, Discord stuff to sort out. Yes, was hoping to stream between one and two, but uh, we had. Yeah, it was a bit, yeah. a bit longer than expected to get stuff set up. So, but no, we're here now. We saw. Of course, uh, life gets in the way, then, doesn't it? Because you have things to do yeah. outside of all this shit as well. Like, you know. Yes, uh, we do. So I don't, I don't. There's nobody in the waiting room. If anybody. You can from any time. Um, Alex Santos says, "What time zone are we in on the Discord?" I'm only after noticing now. We GMT, are uh, really. at the moment. We're at the moment with BST, British Summertime. But yeah, GMT BST. I don't think there's much difference. No, I think they got rid of GMT, didn't they? Somebody was actually telling me that to stop using GMT because oh, yeah, because Ireland is in, is a different time zone now, apparently. We don't go with GMT. Uh, it's some sort of weird fucking European European standard time. Another EST. Oh just right. Doesn't fucking makes sense. Like you know, there's just too many of them. You know. <laughs> so I'll just say yeah, GMT enough. to like make it less confusing. Uh, we are GMT, so it's what fourteen thirty-seven right now. Jesus. Uh, talk about getting the show late, like. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, yep. Yeah, for anyone uh, watching, we will both be doing our own um, our own gameplay. Well, uh, trying uh, to whatever game of our choice. Well, yeah, trying to. And <laughs> um, I will I will be starting up a new uh, save mode in normal on No Man's Sky for anyone who's interested. We do also have um, our own screenshot showcase down in the bottom left, uh, just of all the people in our Discord who have uh, uploaded any screenshots to us. And we've uh, put them into a nice little slideshow for people to browse at whilst they li listen to me and Alpha uh, well, what's chat on? about whatever, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really much. And, and w when we take a break, which is inevitable, because, uh, you know, we have human bodies. And, uh, yeah, we're probably going to, like, throw that screenshot thing up so that you guys won't be too bored, hopefully. Yep. Um, guys on my stream, if you want to let me know if the background music that I added to this is too distracting, I can I can turn it off if if you wish. Um, that that was self consciousness getting the better of me. <laughs> think you won't want to hear <laughs> just my voice. So yeah, there was um, I think Chaos Control last week added, uh, submitted a topic, didn't he? For us to discuss. Um, yes, he did. And, uh, um, I think we should run through that. Yeah, well, if you want to uh, start on it yourself. Yeah, so he said, after playing for a while, to bask in the universe of No Man's Sky, has any thoughts or new realizations serves within yourself, be it philosophical or moral? And he said he doesn't have any mic for now. <laughs> And that was, yeah, uh, so he unfortunately won't be joining us on chat, no. but he has left a topic for us to start off with, so... Oh, hey, Samtex. How are you doing, man? Um, yeah, well, the topic is massive, you know, like, psych psychological and even moral, like, you know, like, I, I can see that there's going to be a lot of a debate about morality and stuff like that once multiplayer comes in. More than now, yeah. really, you know? But philosophically, like, Jesus, like, No Man's Sky is the second Matrix. Let's just put it that way, when it comes to moral, uh, philosophical, like, you know, because it just, 
plays with your mind so much. Like, you know, are we actually in a yeah? Um, what do you call it? A simulation, or is that the real world? Have we actually advanced so far that we can go around to these different, um, you know, galaxies? Yeah. Like, uh, there's so much to do, and there's so much lore as well. There's so much they can do with the lore. Oh yeah, they've definitely made the game so that it's 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 something that they can work on for a very long time, and they've left it open to add in, add in so much to it. Like yeah, like you say with the lore, they've not really they've not really limited themselves. They haven't, but in some respects, That's they it. have a little bit. Because for new players, if you jump into a game, you get all of these, um, you get all of these little tidbits of what each race does, of what happened, and there's yeah. a, such a sense of mystery. But it can be daunting as well, because you're throwing somebody in, they've damaged their ship, they've uh, like you know they have a serious amount of work ahead of them to actually get anywhere, and then they hear yeah. about all these races, but all this stuff is like so scattered that in order to like you know to comprehend a bigger picture. Like, what, without, like, being a No Man's Sky fanatic like us, who've been playing it for, like, you know, the majority of our time since we found it, it's hard to dig through all that, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's like you said, that the, the topic you give us is so vast, because it's, it can all come down to a person's personal opinion. Yeah. And like you said, it, it, it gets you wondering, like, are we... Are we as ourselves trapped in a trapped in a simulation in in real life now? Not talking about No Man's Sky because you never know the the possibilities are endless with stuff like this. Yeah, like it is, and even and Wake and Titan made it worse though. <laughs> when they started throwing oh, did, real yeah. situations at us, like you know, like oh, we are people and we are yeah. trapped by where, or like you know, there's this like big company that's trying to like take down humanity, like yeah. So there's so much lore to actually um, do, like you know, delve into yeah. and and explore and. But I don't think that's a bad thing, yeah. though. because if there's 18 quintillion planets and it's going to take more than like mine or your lifetime or anybody on the single planet of Earth's lifetime to actually go through. Yeah, the lore has to kind of like you know has big shoes to fill in that way as well. Like you know, so I think it's. Oh yeah, it I does. think it's vague for a reason, you know. <laughs> I mean, um, like, what do you think? Do you think with next they're going to um, they're going to like increase, or well, not so increase the law, but uh, sort of expand on the law that they've added into the game now? Because, like you said, each each race when you go through the um, you go through the law of them, they've all got their own very specific like story and background yeah. to like how their race started. So, do you reckon they're going to expand on that a lot more and actually? add in like maybe with a story mode a lot more to do with the lore so it's not just it's not just the basic like background story of the races there's still stuff going on now that you'll start learning like maybe something to do with the Gek and the Corvax at the moment because they, they have a big history in their lore yeah well I'd hope so I'd hope they'd flesh something out or at least um I don't know Kind of like that big war that happened as well. I think they should put a little bit more got to do with that in, and kind of I don't know, kind of make a story about that. Yeah. Like I I, I see that maybe like if we we're in um if we we're in like a simulation, wouldn't it not be so far fetched that maybe they could do the multiplayer as kind of like um. Uh, some sort of a dimension that the, the uh, time was untouched and it's actually during the time of the great battle yeah so if it is the time of the great battle pvp would make a lot more sense and everybody could have their like f opposing factions oh yeah that's actually a really good um you could wear looking at that. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, because like that'd be pretty cool if they did actually introduce that into it. Because if you think about it, there is still still one more uh, door in uh, not on Polo's um, anomaly. Space anomaly. And it's an yeah. anomaly, so that means it can travel through time. It transcends time and space. Therefore, they have the knowledge of what happened before. 
and by going there we could probably travel through time and that there you go that's instant pvp you know <laughs> there's your battles for you you know good luck <laughs> also sort of make sort of making this um nardo and polo space anomaly sort of like a lobby yeah. for pvp so you can go in there you go through that that second door and then you can sort of join up into a lobby with other players to go into a PvP sort of universe, in a sense, or server, like whichever way you want to look at it. Mm, pretty much, yeah. Kind of like yeah, that. I actually think that would work quite well, and I think that would work especially well for those solo players that are really worrying about the PvP aspect of the game. That would, um, yeah. That would solve a lot of the issues. Because it would compartmentalise everything. Nothing will be touched, and then there'll be a new game mode. But the new game mode will be like practically, um, like you know, stuck within an anomaly. So in order to get there, you have to track down an anomaly. I know it takes about three, four warps, maybe max. Once you do get there, like you know, you can actually choose to go in, do the PvP, forget about the story or whatever, you know. And that means yeah. it gives access to the players that are new, and the old, and uh, all that. Oh God. We've already got our first technical hitch. Why, they can't that? hear you, apparently. So sorry, guys. They can't no, hear they me. Can't hear you. What on, on your stream? On my stream, yeah. Um, ask them to jump over onto my screen and let me know if they can hear me on mine, because I've only got two viewers, and I think that's me and okay. you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, guys, if if you jump over to. Um, Infinite stream quickly and ask or and just see if you can actually uh, hear him or me. We we've got something wrong that, here. <laughs> that may be an issue on my end. Well, it says on I've my got, end. I've got my mic and everything mute, uh, um, unmuted. Yeah. So it says on my end that there's no desktop audio reaching here. Sorry about that, Semtex, and uh, no problem. I, I, I okay. Was, I was happy to do your art. Pixelized says, I think that the Atlas has trapped us and next will open space portal, travel, uh, and the Atlas will send armies of freighters, etc. after us. That's my thoughts on it. Yeah. Who said that? Pixelize. Pixelize. Yeah. Said that the oh, Atlas right, okay. send armies of, fright of fighters, etc. Yeah. after us. Yeah, well, that, that could be it. I'm sure the Atlas is like, I don't know, I have to look at my end here because it does say the desktop audio is not being picked up whatsoever from me yeah um well on my end in the mixer it's the death of audio is fine and um the mic orcs is picking up my voice as well so oh god don't tell me i have to like shut this stream there and then start it up again uh, like if i quickly ex exit out of obs and open it up quickly yeah. i don't think it will affect the stream I do apologise to any viewers on my end for this technical difficulty. Yeah, so sorry. It is our first stream, so, you know, bear with us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> This stream probably will be a case of working out all of the, uh, the hiccups and glitches. And yeah, that. it's working now. Technical issues. So, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Hello and welcome all. Pretty sure now, because I can actually see it. I didn't actually notice, because there's so many sliders here to work on. <laughs> there really is, like, I was ridiculous. I think I shouldn't have put the background music in because I was just con confused myself all the time. <laughs> nice working no, now. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Nice. So where were we now? Um I can't so remember. Semtex says that he's over in your stream right now. Right, hello Semtex. Uh, thanks for joining our Discord as well and I um I do agree with you the it was Semtex that you made the uh, the channel art and that for, wasn't it? Was it was indeed, yes. Yeah, like uh, when he uh, when he sent it over to me, like yeah, it freaking looks awesome. To be fair, man, fair play, you've you've done quite well there. And the uh, the logo and that like and channel art for my YouTube channel is also done by by Alpha Pixis. So like. Mm. You really are good at it. Like I said to you, you give yourself credit. Yeah, I, I, you I, are. You are good at it. I like to dabble. That's that's what I like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do. Just, uh, right. So, yeah. Is there anybody else that wants to jump in here? Because um, we didn't get any more topics really to cover, did we? 
No, we didn't. I mean, if anybody just wants to post them into the uh, yeah. into either mine or Alpha's chat. That would be cool. Live chat, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm happy for that. And, and we'll, we also have we'll the channel it. open here as well, if people want to come in and um, wait in the waiting room and we can pull you on. Uh, that's all cool. If you don't want to talk, we can understand that some people don't want to talk. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Like, I mean, it's... I know some people love to, like, because I've really enjoyed going on Cobra streams and stuff like that and yeah. uh, and chatting, but then you have got those people that aren't aren't so fond of it, but it. it's each to their own, oh, isn't yeah. it? So, yeah. Well, the option's there. That's why we have it. We have the waiting room, you know. It is a yeah, talk show, it, so like... we are going to be talking, yeah. and it's good to hear other people's opinions also. Yeah, it is. Like, it's... I can struggle to think of topics at times, yeah. so for people to throw them at me and to give me something to discuss myself, I love it because it it makes me think twice about some of the opinions I've had before and oh my god, you're a weird, weird ass looking creature you are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I try my best. Begin oh man, have you ever watched, um, what's it called now, um, Silent Hill? Yeah. Well, I played you know, all the games. Co oh, Pyramid Head. Yeah, I've got a creature here that looks just like that. <laughs> well, you definitely, definitely should, like, um... Oh, I've got a... Don't worry, I've got a screenshot yeah. of it. Well, look... Uh, Photo Sim mode Texas is one thing I love. Uh, ...in the waiting room, if we want to pull him on. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, hello, hippie weirdo. Uh, he's messaged into my chat, uh... What up guys, did both of y'all start over? Um, what do you mean start over on their, on their game or...? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Semtex yeah. got kicked, or maybe he moved himself back, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, technical issues, it's great, it's great. Let's let's see if we can get him on again. Hello, Semtex. Hello, how's it going guys, you alright? Grant, yourself. Oh, hello there, Santa. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was, uh, I didn't know what happened. I clicked on the connect and it, um, booted me somewhere else. And <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably something on our end, to be fair. <laughs> Still working through everything. Oh, it's confusing, huh? Like, I, I, I find all of this stuff really crazy because I'm a bit of a technophobe myself. It's all, um, yeah. That's why I do everything by PlayStation. You just click a button and you're done. <laughs> it's, uh, not as confusing as all the rest of it. I'm a complete PC noob, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit, guys. Sorry about this. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, that's not a problem. This is awesome because I love the fact that you sound so much like Sean Murray. Like I've, <laughs> I've watched so many of Cobra's streams, and every time I hear you on it, like it, yeah, you're you're one of the people I've always wanted to speak to as well. I've only managed to get on Cobra's stream um, once so far because of conflicting time zones and work and that and you know real life boring life yeah it can be hard man. so yeah it's yeah. It, it it's awesome to have you honestly like, oh well thank you honor. thank you man no i'm like i'm like i mean no one is a, a massive like shock that you guys would like to have me over chatting <laughs> to be honest oh, it's man, a bit crazy really like my opinion don't really mean anything but it's not yeah it's nice to just spit or ball with people i think uh just the excitement of a uh, kind of nms and the community at the moment is um infectious i think yeah well, that's yeah, that's it. You pretty much summed up why we wanted to do this talk show. I mean, we we don't want to limit it just to No Man's Sky. Like, so uh, anyone listening, like, if you um, if you want to throw topics about any other games or anything else, feel free. But like, I know at the moment, No Man's Sky and the communities that I'm a part of are all hyped up for No Man's Sky and next happening. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a hot topic. Like, it really is. It, seems it to is be, a hot topic. It yeah. does seem to be growing some legs as well. Like a lot of people were. Um, I've noticed on YouTube anyway over the last like two or three weeks like a lot of people were starting to stream this I've never seen before like completely new people uh, I think well, that's yeah, like, really um, cool like, yeah. yeah it really is it's awesome it's good, like uh, we was literally saying before um, before we started up this this stream like it's crazy because we've saw so many people all of a sudden <laughs> starting to do like yeah. their own let's plays or um, live streaming No Man's Sky and no, it is. It is good to see. I'm. I'm really happy for the community because it's an amazing community. I wouldn't be where I am now streaming 
if it wasn't for this amazing and awesome community like yeah no you're absolutely right big man i'm blown away by the love that me and sword have got over the last couple of weeks it's like we literally just blew it's blown up like so fast it's unreal having crazy big youtubers come in and like hype up your chat and things it's it, it's really surreal like i generally feel like i haven't woken up and it's like a bit a bit of a dream really it's really still feel weird. like you're in a simulation <laughs> yeah you, know, you need to check off that wear uh, wear headset mate oh, it's, you're gonna it's get mad. pulled like, in you look down at your chat and you <laughs> see people like uh you know um cobra and um you know like so, yeah, and... all of those guys you know these are all like yeah. people that are like you know you've watched loads of their content you hang off every word they say uh, you really kind of value their opinions and you're like they're playing a the game with your mate and all of a sudden they're like hello <laughs> it's like such a weird yeah. <laughs> such a weird feeling it really is but like don't get me wrong may may it like continue forever i absolutely love it but <laughs> it is really surreal at the same time you know what i mean it's yeah, it is. super cool i think that's the thing yeah, about man. it though because every 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 youtuber feels that they're not good enough so when they see somebody else like they look up to somebody else you know every everybody yeah, does definitely so i mean i look i, I look up to cobra so much because it was my brother that introduced him that introduced me to him a couple of months ago and since being introduced to him it really i don't know what it was but it sparked something inside of me that just just driven me to set up my own channel and reach out to people and stick up for hello games and no man's sky a bit you know yeah. try and help those people that are in a bit of conflict at the moment oh, i think especially for us three being kind of like um all from the uk it's hello games is kind of like something that also represents games from england yeah, and, it does. and from the united kingdom if you know what i mean and i feel that they're like the underdog and it's our natural we always want That's to sort of get out there so. yeah you know what i mean to get out there and like yeah. really hype up the the underdog really give them the support they need it's a very like oddly a british thing to do if you know what i mean so it's um i think it's really nice to see like everyone kind of getting behind them i think they had a really bad run of luck they had a lot of unfortunate circumstances that kind of ending up with the game releasing it in the way they did and i think one day down the road we're probably going to see um more information about it from their perspective and i think once everyone understands kind of all the pressures that everybody was under at that time why they had to make yeah. the decisions they did whether they were ill-informed maybe they you know whether they weren't necessarily the right moral choices to make you know they had a lot riding on on all of this going and actually becoming a, a game and um yeah I, I think it was more they were forced by situation rather than by choice you know i think that's ultimately what it boils down to yeah and they still do they have a like i'm i'm of the firm belief that they don't have to prove anything now at least they're their own community but i know Absolutely. that some people think that they do still and i don't get it like the, they pretty much have it in the bag. Like if they're going over to Xbox now, that just shows that they're comfortable enough with their own products that they can actually sell it to another market. Yeah. And, and yeah, with definitely. Wii game being such a large, large platform as well, you know, yeah. they've, they've nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I genuinely think that 505 and Microsoft have seen something um, that's got them really yeah. excited about the game because they're really hyped about pushing out there and admittedly it is a product they do this but not I don't know that they seem genuinely excited to be getting involved so I, I think that's like a really good um, hint to all of us that next is actually quite um, it's going to have Amazing. like a really big impact I think on uh, NMS I really do um, I certainly yeah, agree well. with you. I, I really, really hope so because I think that these guys really deserve kind of to be able to put the, kind of the 2016 saga behind them, um, the community to kind of r rally behind a company that sh is kind of like the model of how company uh, game companies should be working at the moment. You know, they're listening to the community, they're building upon um, what the community um, wants. Um, and they're proud of that community. And I, 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 there's not many developers out there that kind of go in the direction that the, the community wants rather than one that might bring them more fame or money. More money. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. That's, that's like a really, um, 
huge thing but like a lot of gamers out there just purely for the sake of like gaming in the future if this is the sort of company that you know and these are the actions a company should take that's why you should support um hella games you know get behind them because we need more companies that are setting an example yeah, of we how do. we want it to be rather than ones that are putting you know tiny paywalls in front of huge amounts of content or um sticking microtransactions in for like a, a glowing you know hat or something <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, you know i, yeah. I really yeah. think that as well and, and don't get me wrong i think that model's brilliant i think you know getting free to play games out there and allowing people to invest as much as they want in it is like also a very kind of cool way to do it um but not many companies support games for as long as Helly Games have and, and have put so much no, work don't. into their content. So, yeah, they, they deserve it, don't they, I think? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You, don't, you don't see many games that will pull up with as much abuse and grief that they did and still, two years down the line, stand up and say, you know, we haven't given up on you, we are listening, we're here for you. Like, we, we are going to keep working on this game, it doesn't matter what. And I, I truly believe that is because to, to Sean Murray and Hello Games, this isn't just a game to make money, it isn't just a way of profit. It is a dream of their own, it is something that, that he wished he had when he was a kid, and he wants people to be able to have that. I think it's Every a statement, game. kind of. It's like a mission statement, almost. Um, you know, they set out with this really quite um, an unachievable goal, almost. They were really, like, aiming at the stars with this for such a small team to have a concept for something that is literally so massive in comparison to any other kind of game sandbox that you'll ever play. You know, there's some other really big games out there, but nothing else has quint you know 18 quintillion planets that you can go and chill on it's, it's the scale is like yeah. insane really when you think about it and for it to be like ultimately just four people that kind of put all the base work in for this to work is it's it is like sean says you know mind blown <laughs> it really is it's crazy really much and they've done they've done it at a perfect time as well because like the technology, the, the way technology is, like you're never going to get technology as good in procedural generation as right now. Like they can perfect it and stuff like that, and with things like processors and everything like that moving more, like faster, e growing each year, year on year. And uh, obviously hard drive yeah. space, everything else, like, you know, but like no, nobody in the current climate wants to, you know, run out and do something that nobody else has done before and actually set like some sort of standard for it and i think they've pretty much yeah. set the standard for all procedural generation in games going forward oh yeah definitely well we're definitely. seeing a lot of um the, the funny thing is is that loads of games have actually used it since um and it's kind of uh you know uh, wildlands for example that uses um, procedural generation uh, to a degree for all of the um like the building structures, how they're placed, all that kind of stuff. A lot of companies have realised that you can actually take a lot of uh, the work hours out of the game by using procedural generation. I think that ultimately that's why there was such a big uplash because there were a lot of other game companies out there that kind of feared what was possible. Yeah. Um, no Man's Sky sort of put a product out there that only had four people working on it and you've got huge companies like you know um all of the guys that like Treyarch and you know all of those kind of guys that work on yeah. things like massive things like call of duty you've got thousands and thousands of people and you know it's, it's not any more convincing than no man's guy that was worked on by four guys it's a, an epic feat really of, of kind of technical engineering that they pulled it off and that we're even able to play it as it is right now i think to be honest with you yeah, it really is. The fact that the game, like the game itself, it may be, it may be lacking some content that you know we was expecting, or you know whatever. But the fact that the game actually runs, and it runs as smooth as it does, like you say, that is a technical feat. And for four people to, you know, start that up and get that working is, it's, it's truly amazing. And yeah. achieved their dream while doing it. Yeah, because, like yeah. anybody out there knows. Oh, I would well. say they're probably not quite there. I think Sean's got like a really 
a set vision of what he wants this game to be. And I think that's why he made that quote in the interview he had on Xbox Live of, we wanted to take a year, we wanted to make it the game we wanted it to be. And I think that probably holds yeah. more weight than any of the rest of that interview. He's, Very true. Yeah. Like, he's actually saying, like, this game is at a point now where I feel I've achieved kind of the base that I expected this this to be upon release. And I think this is kind of moving forward from here, the game's gonna have its legs and it, it will be able to sort of stand on its own and they'll not have to focus on it quite as much as they have up until this point. I think it'd be nice for them to kind of be able to put down their keyboards, walk away for five minutes and be like, okay, let's let these guys run with it. We're going to take back the information from the community in, say, six months' time. And at that point, when we know kind of the game, the direction or most people are playing it in, then we can kind of work on tools to enhance that experience. I think that's always going to be the way with No Man's Sky. It's just going to keep building upon what the community shows, the direction the game could go in, definitely. Well, it simply, it's, it simply stands to reason that the best evidence for what you're saying is... Um, when it first like released, it was like three gigs on a disc. Yep. Now it's like eleven. So they're constantly shoving stuff into it, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and optimization as well. Like you were gonna see, like it's the tiny little things that make the difference. Like when I, because I played the game a lot at launch and took a really long break from it, and then I've only very recently come back within the last three, four weeks. Yeah. And the difference in when you're walking around on the terrain is mm. that it's like there's subtle differences that I don't know if people who've kind of played it consistently will have noticed but yeah. to me they're quite abrupt like the you know all of a sudden I, like I'll look out over a train and it'd be kind of hilly and bumpy it used to be but you'd walk around and all the hills kind of reached the same kind of height there wasn't anything but now when you walk around you're like hit the side of kind of a mountain and you'll be going up this mountain and there really will be a sense of kind of height and distance and all of that seems to have been tweaked and you really get that sense of it being more of a real place than a, yeah. a digital kind of grind you, I know that's probably a like, it, They've a weird thing to say. Player. Yeah, they've they've really yeah. put some odd tweaks in there. Like Sean's mentioned in views before, is that you know people were saying to them that the game feels more epic than ever before, and it's like these little tweaks that they're putting in that are making those kind of differences, and that's something they want to really continue. And this was uh, you know previous to all of this uh, kind of next info. This was actually you know before that, so I wouldn't be surprised if we say see kind of incremental changes that give like a really drastic change to how you actually feel when you're in game even though it's not something you can like just look at and put your finger on yeah. i think when you're actually in the game you're really going to sort of be like oh wow it feels more alive kind of in the game and that's something i'm really yeah. excited about uh you know it's already quite quite a convincing experience but for them to kind of add more depth to that it, it doesn't need to go far because it to become a, almost a really sim kind of game as well as being sort of sci-fi and that's really interesting because it then it ultimately becomes it's kind of like second life in space oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is yeah. really really yeah. um i think that's yeah. what everyone imagined no man's sky to be when it came like the original trailers came out and we all saw kind of like those rendered trailers for e3 uh, you know i'm really specific on saying that because i think people always imagine that that was the oh, no, they were, they were totally scripted <laughs> yeah exactly and and uh, it was a it was a you know it was an idea it was the it was the concept art in video format yeah that, that's probably that what they wanted that. to achieve you know <clears throat> yeah you know what this i mean is our game pretty, it'll get yeah, there eventually you know <laughs> exactly yeah and with people throwing around kind of like, oh, we're finally going to get the E3 build. Because there never was an E3 build. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and like no one played that. And it's and it's wrong to judge a, a, like a product from something that no one's ever experienced. Well, tell them you to go back mean? and look look at the concept art for um, Killzone 2. And look yeah, at the fucking exactly, um, yeah. trailer that came out there and see if they match, you know, because it didn't, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry I got off to interrupt you guys for one second because there's people here on the chat and I've been ignoring them. <laughs> no, no, that's um, fine. Hey, man. 
There was uh, Terence says he is here. Um, Urban Murder says, what's up, chicken butt? And then Urban Murder says, <laughs> Semtex UK, it's like what we talked about last night. And I don't know exactly what subject that's referring to. Uh, well, uh, to be honest, we went over the whole board of uh, kind of the topics. Um, yeah, involved with, you know, I love chatting about uh, No Man's Sky and um, kind of what the possibilities are. It, yeah, it's one of my favourite subjects, so I'll chat to anyone about it for hours, I can't help it, like, yeah. <laughs> I think you're in the same boat as us all there, though. Yeah, especially with what's going yeah. on with No Man's Sky at the moment, it's yeah. just... Like, really, it's that's the reason crazy. why it took us 40 minutes to actually start, because we're just sitting there waffling, you know? Oh. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> we weren't working hard Just sat there all. discussing what we are going to talk yeah. about, and... Oh, I can't wait for next. This is going to be added into it, and that's going to be added into it. Yeah, it's but exciting. No, it's, it really is exciting. It times. really is, yeah. I mean, uh, what's the um, what's the one thing that you're you're looking forward to with next, or that you you hope you hope will be in next? Um, I really like my thing is that I really hope they focused on the the cooperative play and giving that legs, so it not being something that you just run through with your mates in like two hours and then it's yeah. over and then you're you know i'm really hoping that there's um they kind of treat it the same way as the rest of the game where they kind of give it variation or maybe they can like procedurally generate missions um with x amounts of kind of inputs that would give uh, you know you'd be able to like kind of replay those missions over and over again with your pals and it would it wouldn't be exactly the same they'd be like in a similar vein but it would be um yeah like that because i think that's really important now is like the experience people have together i yeah it, we need to start seeing actual stories, kind of like standalone stories using No Man's Sky as a um, as a, as kind of a stage for for those stories. Something where you don't actually have to have anything about No Man's Sky in the story you're telling. You're just using it as a like a you know a backdrop. Something uh, because. I used to watch a guy called Frankie on PC um, in 1080p, and he did this incredible series on uh, Daisy when Daisy oh, very yeah. first I, came I've seen that. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he's like role playing as a hero, and, but it was you know, very it was cinematic as well. Very yeah, cinematic, exactly. And I think that, that especially with this game, it's it, that would be like an absolute crime if we didn't see something in that vein come out of No Man's Sky because it is literally living art the game it yeah. is like a beautiful sci-fi kind of art style that if utilized in the right way would be such a epic way of telling amazing sort of space westerns like think like, like stories like star wars you know people could come up with stories and they can have interaction with their friends and they can capture all of this using kind of no man's sky is their animation tool yeah. kind of i've and got an idea really now that you say that yeah, I, um, I just think this. Like, what if they did amazing. it so that it would be like modules from like like games like Neverwinter Nights? Do you remember that game? Um, oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. I'm they had sure, modules yeah. created by the community and stuff like that. So they were kind of like mods, but it was more expansive. Like they, you could come up with lore, you could come up with like dungeons, you could come up with everything involved in it. Like you know, maybe pick up items and stuff like that. And they used Neverwinter Nights and it's like, you know, it's base game as kind of like a platform to like build your own stories. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is what I think. And like even if you you could have it so that you had X amount of random pieces, or maybe you could even have like player created missions. Like Cobra's um, touched on this a couple of times in some of his shows. Um so more credit to him than anything else. But I think <laughs> that things like that would definitely give the game legs because at the moment it, it um you've kind of got the, the structure of the game there but then you've got it's still 
feels, you know, regardless of how much I love the game, I can completely understand how once people reach a certain point in the game, they feel like it's kind of an empty experience. They're just in a, a you know, a cycle of that there's, you, once you've got up to your kind of S-class freighter and a couple of nice ships, and you've got your yeah, multi-tool yeah. and your exosuit sorted out, that that's then where it kind of like it peters off a little bit because there's nothing for you to kind of achieve where all of the co-op stuff could give you an infinite number of uh, kind of of that replay yeah, value it, because it, you can experience all of those things with different people and it could always be slightly different if you had a procedurally generated element to that like you know you were flying off and you know he said Star Trek and you know every episode of Star Trek is you start, you know they go to a, a system they meet up with like a crazy race and there's you know some sort of story and then the next episode would be the same thing. I think maybe that's kind of what he means, is that you, yeah. it could be quite episodic, you know, and, and, and I think that, especially for, like, creators of for YouTube and stuff like that, that could really become a very interesting tool. Um, you'd get some really cool things coming out of this, and, like, people would be able to buy into the people in those roles, the characters they create and the stories that they then perform would be really yeah. interesting and then you can have like kind of a, a crossing of different communities you know because you're going to have uh you know that like the nip nip gang for example they're going to be telling their own stories and you're going to have other huds that'll be telling their stories but <laughs> I'm sorry, you've got the, the potential then of that all coming together that would be like a really cool thing yeah like if they like oh i know what you're saying so everybody has kind of like their own little like neck of the woods to be kind of like little gangs all plastered all throughout the yeah. universe like yeah, and and or and you know we'll we'll see epic sort of stories come out of this. And I know everyone doesn't like the idea of kind of there being conflict in PvP, but that's gonna bring like a real weight to that to that content. You know what I mean? People yeah. will get involved in those dramas, whether they be role play or not. Some people may take it too serious. Some people like yeah. you know, but but ultimately, let's have the ability to do that and see what comes of it because i think there are so many other games out there that have that and and they've you know gone on for many many a year because they've got those community tools in place and i think you know to cycle back round to the, the question that's what i'm like most excited about is is community tools to let this game and the people that play it tell their own stories definitely oh yeah i yeah i totally agree with you there it is when I, um, oh wait there, sorry, I just had a message from Hippie Weirdo, um, <laughs> <laughs> Ad, Ad me Gecknip got me blasted, got me too blasted lol, to text I'm on Discord, Nip Nip Gang, that's, re um, that's real, that's awesome. Yeah, Hippie Weirdo um, joined the waiting room. Oh, is he, oh, is he jumped into the waiting room? He's in the waiting room, room yes. Do you want um, me to pull him in, or...? Yeah, you can do. He's, um... If he, if he wants to come on, yeah, why not? I cool, mean, and I'll have to go silent for a oh, second, because wow. I must use the bathroom. That's no amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm What's fan, fan girl in that a little bit. Um, What's that? Uh, just, uh, just Darren, um... Just added me as a friend on PSN, which is super cool, man. <laughs> that's, oh, God. That's like, oh, wow. That's insane. Yeah. That's probably insane. That's a bit of a freak. So you're getting all, guys. I'm all girly. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. You know what I mean? That's pretty crazy. Oh, I th this is what I mean. It's like such an unusual um, experience, this. Like, w I've been so, so lucky. So, you know, it's literally, I went, I dialed Cobra one day. I was like, I have to talk to this guy. I've been watching Cobra since, like, the VGX trailers came out yeah. back in... I think it was like 2014, <clears throat> right? Yeah, Something like that. And I've been like watching his content ever since. And then, like, right in the very beginning, it was like completely different to the way it is now with Cobra. You know what I mean? It was yeah, like, I it was a different, like, it wasn't, yeah. And like to see his evolution as a person and like it, the way he's kind of like, it's almost like his excitement birthed the entire community. You know, it was so yeah, weird. Yeah, it really did. It, I watched it, his videos over and over again so many times before this game came out. Like, I've probably got like literally thousands of hours where of me just re-watching like his ships videos from 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where he's like dissecting every little detail of, oh, these engines are here and this dude, and like, we, we, we're speculating, and all the speculation, because I love it, you know, I'm into that, like, conspiracy theories, UFOs, and all of that kind of stuff as well. I find it really, really interesting. And like, I see yeah, that like... in Cobra's No Man's Sky kind of videos if you know what i mean it's always well, has, <laughs> like he's trying to convince been, um... everyone aliens exist you know what i mean it's, <laughs> it's just lovely it's such a cool energy that comes off him i really feel it. yeah it really is so let's uh let's go know, uh... hippie into the chat before yeah. i just uh, yeah. no yeah yeah go on no he's he's gone mute so oh right <laughs> <laughs> stage fright yeah uh um, I've had a message from Insane Liam. Hey guys, how are we all? Um, I'm doing absolutely fantastic, other than the fact that I'm cramped in my tiny little games room and it is scorching hot at the oh moment. God, oh. So I'm like, I'm like dying right now. Luckily, I have a couple of drinks with me, so I should live. <laughs> Oh, savage. It's never nice being in a small hot space. I get that when I'm streaming sometimes. You've got, like, you know, you've got a light on or whatever so that the camera's picking you up properly or whatever. And especially yeah. at the moment, it's been so humid over the last couple of weeks. You're sat there with, like, light shining in your face. And, <laughs> you know, you're trying to stream. Like, that's why I do it so late, I'm not going to lie. It's because it's, like, so much cooler once, it like, the sun goes down. It's just, yeah, windows open right the way up. It's harsh, man, at the moment. It's uh, it not is. comfortable, is it at all? No, not when you're trying to stream and you've got your computer running with two friggin' monitors yeah. <laughs> pumping out heat. <laughs> you got all of this oh, stuff. God. Light shining in your face, monitor shining on your like. Oh, yeah, it's crazy, yeah. man. It's fine. Uh, but yeah. It's okay. Well, but no, yeah, I do. I, we, I do we, love we it. We do live in the UK, after all, so yeah. it, it's not like we have to worry about the heat for very much longer. <laughs> oh, no. It'll be raining before we know it. <laughs> oh yeah, typical British weather for you, that is. Absolutely. Can I ask um, what, what are you guys like the most excited for? That's that. I, I'd be really intrigued to hear what you guys want um, out of next. Um, well, before we answer that, uh, Hippie Weirdo has said I was waiting, my bad, so I don't know if you want to try and pull him in again, Alpha. Or has Alpha gone mute? Yeah, Alpha's gone mute. Okay, um, yeah, I'll answer your question. What am I looking forward to most in next? To be honest, um, I know this is like a boring way to do it, but like, I'm the same as you, Semtex, because... No Man's Sky, when I was following it before it was released, it was something that me and my brother were like both so hyped up for. And one of my mates from work, we was, um, it was just me and my mate at work working the night shift. And we had uh, different streamers, um, live streams playing on our phone through a speaker whilst we was working. So we could hear all these updates going on with No Man's Sky. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, like to be able to actually join up with my brother and with my mates and with all of the amazing people I've met over these No Man's Sky communities is something I truly look forward to. But like you said, I really do hope that they, they do add in that. They don't just make it so we can see each other and have our own avatars and their own characters. I want... I want something so that when I finish the solo side to No Man's Sky, like your Artemis story and your Atlas story, like you said, I want it to be never-ending story that you can do with co-op players. Like you, like you said, you'll join up with one person and go off to the system and do some crazy missions there, and then the next time you're on, you'll join up with somebody else, and it'll be like it's a completely different game. Yeah. If you get what I mean, like yeah. I say, absolutely, it, that's so exciting. It really is. I say is we shouldn't have to that. worry about that though, because even like no matter what Hello Games implement, there'll still be the modding community there to make the stories like happen. Um, yeah, for us as well. Yeah. Even if Hello I, I Games just hope doesn't they make it something easy. Like at the moment, we actually have achieved like an awful lot. Like there aren't any community tools or anything like that in the game, and there are massive hubs where you've got people like collaborating to achieve things for everyone else. Like the communities pulled together yeah. in amazing ways. So like I'm just hoping that if we get the tools that we need, that that can be extended on like you know infinitely. 
there, there really is like you know no end to the possibility of kind of community if you give if you put the tools in place so that they then yeah. can like pick it up and run with it like being able to uh, you know make your own missions and you know you could have people come to your hub and go and do like specific missions for your hub or in that area or for your federation or whatever you want to call it kind of thing and then you could be rated and people could like go to like a mission board somewhere in a completely different part of the galaxy and they could look at that board and they could be like oh you know this has got you know a four and a half uh, you know star galactic rating let's go and try that mission you know what I mean? And, and awesome idea, then, yeah, yeah. Because I really think yeah, that, that really then, would be. you've never got an end because you're, you've got the creativity of people. It's literally, you're just... Yeah, it's, it's the gamers creating the content yeah, for the game. Yeah, exactly, the game. But yeah, that, the game that is, is absolutely consistently genius. consistently <laughs> being created. There's never going to be an end to that. It's like Little Big Planet. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You've got all of yeah. the player created and there is some amazing stuff in that game. I love that game, by the way. I, I'm sorry, but yeah, I've got to bring it up. It, uh, no Man's okay. Sky always feels a little bit like <laughs> Little Big Planet to me, that it's kind of, it's Little Big Planet without the ability to like actually make the stuff yet. I feel yeah. like it's, yeah. if you're kind of frustrated, you're almost like held in a cell because you can see that there's all this incredible potential, but you're like locked behind the systems that are in place in the game at the minute. And yeah. I think this, you know, something like that would really open the doors to such a vast array of creativity. And like, you know, this is just, uh, an idea from me but you know if you think of all the like thousands and thousands of people out there that come at this game from a different perspective even people like General Lokar yeah like he wants to play the game in a certain way and it would allow him to create missions that were like good for people that had the same kind of outlook and wanted to play the same style as him so it keeps everybody across the entire board super happy because happy. you yeah. don't have to go and do any of these missions it's always choice but it allows people to put it out there and for other people to kind of experience that as well. And that, I think that would be like the best thing this game could possibly get is like those sorts of community tools. It would blow up in so many ways, it really would. Oh, it would. No, like, yeah, what, what you said there is if they implemented that into No Man's Sky, that truly would be amazing. Like you said, you, you, you've got these communities together that have built like the galactic hub and whatnot and they've actually got their own mission board there where people can post up their own missions and then like you said that people can rate them and then other people can search for them and then fly to that system accept the mission yeah. go I mean, off and, and do it like and, like, that, and you could have an incentive involved in that as well you could take that one step further and actually have like an incentive for creating these stories you know if you like the higher the rating you got uh, you could have like say a unique um building items that you could get or shapes or something like that so that there's like a real incentive to be creative and to provide those kind of stories as well so that enough people played yeah. that mission you'd unlock like a special like icon or whatever that you're able to spare on your base like you know it would create kind of a i don't know it would yeah it would give you incentive other than like a lot of other people have said sort of they have no incentive in getting units and that the game just seems to be like get more units get more units get more units but if it was actually sort of items that you got f it were un unattainable by units and you had to achieve those by being creative and by providing something to the community then yeah. that would you know just in and of itself create something really vibrant I think. like uh, player made items would be a good example of that because you wouldn't exactly, be able to get them yeah, anyway trophies yeah. you know you could have specific trophies or whatever that you could obtain through achieving and um, missions that you could display in your base or you know um little holograms or something that you could put on you know in display base somewhere um so that people when they came by and visited they could you know go and see or sort of like this you know mission room like a trophy room like yeah. back in yeah. Africa in the days yeah. where you know you'd have all the heads of the animals all over the walls you could have like really cool like player created trophies that were kind of like head mounts but not head mounts just like cool oh, I mean, things you know what, what I mean? would be um, what would be a pretty cool thing to implement with that is uh, in your starship sort of like in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy with um, Yondu how he's got all his little figures on like 
on like his seat next to him, so maybe in your starship having all yeah. these little trophies and lying like sort of thing. Exactly. And that. then in like your freighter like having I'd them up in I'd there, love like, to have that would be cool. Or something. <laughs> Cool, yeah. You know what I mean? That you could place wherever you wanted because it would just give a yeah. sense of ownership of it and become more yours. It, you, it would feel like, yeah, you would get an, uh, like a feeling of ownership. It would feel like a prized possession. Uh, yeah, and it would be, that is where kind of the uniqueness, the individualness would come from. It would just create yeah. that kind of sense because you could watch some guy stream and you'd be in his cockpit that he's designed himself and you'll get like one flavour. And then, like someone else, could have a completely different idea of what they like their cockpit to look like. And you'd like watching those streams that it would feel more personal yeah. to that individual person yeah. and everything. It would really give a sense of identity. And kind of that's what it misses a little bit without any customization at the moment. And everyone's been crying out for sort of being able to make it like a little bit their own. And I think that's the, like those two things are definitely really good examples of how you can give people yeah, yeah. creativity and allow the game to then ha like really sort of stand up and walk away on its own just because the community yeah. is going to do let, that you know? so, yeah let the, let the game for it speak for itself then exactly yeah and then yeah. you know they can concentrate um, on loads more stuff that they can bring in um, without yeah. us bugging them for updates <laughs> that would be a good um, thing can I just uh, jump in for a second? Um, do you want to try pulling Hippie Weirdo in again? Yeah. Alpha. Um, get him on chat and see what That's he's what got I was to say. Also, uh, to also uh, Aiden has also said Nip Nip Gang, screw Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kelly always says, boy, it gets to 44 here in the summer. Well, she yeah, already has. That's feels like in my room right now. Some. some some time keeping cool then. <laughs> cool. So yeah, we'll yeah, get Hippie um, Weirdo in. Uh, he says he's deafened at the moment. I'm sure he can change that. Yeah, no worries. So, uh, Semtex, what do you think to the idea of like... He's um, jumped out. Who, Semtex has? No, Hippie. <laughs> hippie, oh, okay. Don't think it lets me drag him in because he's deaf, uh, deafened. Oh, right. Um... Uh, Aiden's Can you not undeafen yourself, Hippie? What, Aiden's waiting to yeah, come on? Yeah, he's waiting to come on. Yeah, if you want to pull Aiden on before, um, and then Hippie can try and yeah. figure out why he's deaf at the moment. Hello, <laughs> Aiden. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Infinite Pixar uh, Talk Show. <laughs> so, Great to have you on. Nice, nice to be here, guys. Yeah, no good, good. So, um, some text. So yeah, is there uh, is there any topics that you'd like to uh, delve into, be it No Man's Sky or or anything else for that matter? You know, honestly, I don't know. I've mostly just over these past few days been thinking about what next is going to add, but I don't have any solid ideas that I haven't covered before. So, no. is there anything that you um like I asked uh? Semtex, anything that you're looking forward to yourself for, uh, for next? Something that you hope is in the game? I think player trade is going to be huge. I think that's going to bring a ton player of trade. people together. And if they add, like you guys said, like a collectible item system, like bobbleheads or something, <laughs> it would add so much to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems like we're all on the same page here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I've noticed, Aiden, that you've posted something that I, I didn't actually get a chance to look at just yet because I was basically so busy up until we actually went live. Um, you said something about um, train systems or some sort of transport. Is that you? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Um, so I'm bad at explaining things. So if you're a bit confused, just hop over to the article because I'm the worst at explaining any of my ideas. But <laughs> I wanted to give units a purpose and help new players who like wouldn't have better warp drives or such. Um, yeah. And also create a new way to play the game. And the idea comes from, like, you'll buy a freighter, and so long as in next you can um, get people onto it, you could just ferry people around for a price. And then that comes... Like, that created the idea of how am I going to pay for the freighter 
So that was a huge problem. And I came up with the tax idea for that. And it would also encourage people to use the trains where, say you're in, say, the Galactic Hub. They enforce a tax on their systems, kind of like a toll road, where each time you warp into a system, the higher level the system, the more you have to pay. And it's nothing major, it's like 50,000 for a blue system, which, by the time you get the warp drive cheetah, is pocket change. Yeah, yeah pretty much. But <laughs> it if there's... a bit like Galactic Uber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but it's much, on yeah. a strict path, and it, it would mean, like, you don't... One, you don't have to pay for fuel. You just have to pay, like, maybe 3k for a ticket, much cheaper than the normal tax of working in. It would bring players together because you constantly have a group of six people going to these same star systems. So it's always a way to meet new people. It would help out with new players who like can't warp into a blue system because I still don't have a warp drive feeder and I've got a 70 hour save. I've just been crappy with the RNG and I can't find any uh, extreme oh, planets. Yeah. I'm exactly the same. I've, um, I've got 150 hours on my most recent save on um, on my PlayStation and I've still yet to come across the uh, the Fata drive. Like, Luckily I've got my own freighter so like you say you can just jump to I'm using my freighter as well. Have you guys got the Amino app downloaded? I do indeed, I am a part of the No Man's Sky cast. I have cool. it, but I keep forgetting that I have it because I only got it this week. <laughs> okay, because I was going to say, cause <laughs> what, it's, it's a really cool thing to go and look in the databanks because you'll find that a lot of these resources are actually in there to be found. Um, so. Uh, I mean, the first one would obviously be the glyph path for a lot of people. You know, once they get the first two glyphs, they can go and get the rest of them with the glyph path in less than an yeah, hour. Yeah. Yeah. And once you've got all of those, then like literally that it literally opens up the galaxy to you because you can hop through or at least get um, you know a portal address for somewhere near to where you want. Hop through and then you you know you've got those resources right there um, at your fingertips, really. Um, yeah, I think that's another thing. It would be sort of an amazing thing if they could, would would be able to integrate something like that, mm. so that people would be able to look up kind of places in the game, like an in-game wiki or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Handy. Sorry, that just hit me then when um, we were talking about that. I didn't it would be mean also to, nice as well I if. I'd, sorry for cutting across, but if you could build base terminuses in different places and use them, them as a form of transport as well. Like limited maybe to mm -hmm. like, you know, one per planet and instead of actually building bases everywhere to use the terminuses, you could just build them separately. And I think that might come into play with a new ship. Everyone's thinking that it's going to be like an attack ship, but I'm more lenient on the side so that it'll be more like the, uh, the Cyclops from Subnautica. A mo uh, mobile base, you have a teleporter and a geo bay in there, maybe a yeah. few stations to make some more items, maybe a farm. Um, but I, I, I was always think... thinking kind of like the Enterprise in that respect, kind of thing, you know, of, of, like rather than being something that's set up for war, it's more something that's set up for exploring. Yeah. It's sort of pushing yeah. its boundaries so that it's, you know, it's, it's not something class. massively overpowered, you know what I mean, in any way, you know, when you, that way when you get into fights, it, that they're, you know, a real challenge and you have to work together to survive and you know, that in itself becomes an incredible story that you experience. But um, in, yeah. so in Star Trek they've got that right, yeah. separated, so um, maybe maybe if ships going forward you could actually put like uh, more attachments to them. Um, kind of say you get an explorer class but you were like you love the look of it and stuff like that and you really want that explorer class to be a fighter for instance. So you could put like modules inside it and upgrade it to like better at fighting even though it is like an explorer class yeah i get that yeah I, know, I, th I think that always comes down to the balance though doesn't it with the the different classes uh, yes yeah. that's, that's what you find with um that's why i think i like the exotics more because they kind of give you more even bonuses across the field so you can kind of get them Mm -hmm. I think they're the they're the all in yeah. ones, if you know what I mean. But you got like a jack of all trades. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like a portion. Yeah. It's it's like oh, you've yeah. got the you've got the lovely engine, the lovely suspension, the lovely brakes already in place. So you don't need to upgrade any of that. Um, but you're not going to have much boot space. But you, you know, if you really want to, you can throw a stereo in there. 
You know what I mean? It's, that's that's <laughs> yeah. the kind of feel I get yeah, from yeah. the exotics, and um, all the other ones really are a lot more sort of specific to their role. You know, and yeah, the it would be nice to have a, another difference with the uh, with the freighter thing. It'd be interesting to see how that fits in between what we already have and the freighters that we have as well. I think. Yeah. Hmm. There's so much different things. That's, that's the problem with No Man's Sky. There's so much that you forget about what you can discuss. Like you come up with an idea yeah. and then five minutes later you come up with another one, the other idea is gone. You know? Yep. Yeah, I, I'm really lenient more towards the um, Cyclops side, especially if they do multiplayer where it's only survival. Because right now, using Romer Geo Bays or like any Geo Bay, if you're playing in normal, it's not worth it because it's so easy. If you're playing in survival, it's a huge cost and it's really a risk on whether or not it would be worth it. It's yeah. 30,000, but in survival it's necessary. So I feel like that ship will at least have something to do with Geo Bays because didn't it have landing gear? And um, it looks like it could hold a garage in it. Uh, I don't know because the, the, there seems to be turrets underneath it, and and on top of it. Well, I think if yeah, they're going to extends down beyond that, but you don't see any landing gear even on the ships we have in game at the moment. If they're in mm -hmm. in flight, you you never see the landing gear until it actually lands. So it could quite easily have yeah, it. We just don't come see out it. the bottom. Yeah, you know. I, I was, think so. I was yeah. thinking because if they bring in PVP, you might want your mobile base that's left empty to have some sort of say automated security against other people because if you leave this base just out in the middle of a planet filled with resources someone could easily just break in and take all of them so i feel like that could be like an automated do defense. you reckon that will be something they will add to next the possibility of like if you stumble upon somebody else's base you can sort of like the manufacturing facilities and the operation centers you can shoot down the main door and then go in and like you say, pillage everything that they've they've got in there. Like, is that something you'd like? I I would like it, even though I wouldn't really do it myself. I think it would just add a lot more risk and caution to the game. And like yeah. um like when playing Rust, I would love base building, even though I would get raided all the time. I just find that idea of needing to, to secure up against other people so much fun. I don't know. See, I think. If you look at examples of games that are really like that, like Rust, like um, Ark Survival, are kind of like Conan now. Yeah. I fear kind of implementation in a similar way to that because the, I'm 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 sorry to hate. I don't want to nay say anyone else's community, but a lot of those communities are really toxic. They are. Like, really I've been yeah. Hard for a yeah. really long time, I feel like and yeah. it was very very like. The longer it went on, the more and more toxic it got. People were like being really vile, and I think if it's not put in in a way that's not where, because if it's about you literally take everyone's stuff if you raid them because you're more powerful, because you have a certain asset that someone else isn't able to get to, because you're the most powerful people, and you stop people from reaching that asset, yeah. then it becomes like you've got the big kids, and essentially it's like the bullies in the playground. If you see what I mean, that's yeah, what it no, went totally up, turned agree, into, yeah. and that's what I fear, and I think that's what everyone else kind of fears, is seeing, like, No Man's Sky go in that direction, so I, you know, I really hope that they've implemented it in a way where there isn't, um, that backlash down in the road. Yeah, I, mean. I feel like you've got the side of the galaxy on with you, because in Rust it would always be the condensed map that would force people to do PvP, because if you have a large enough map, you can easily play the game as a hermit, never talk yeah. to anybody, you can just do that. But because of such a small map, people are forced to fight. So I feel like there definitely will be raiders if PvP is implemented like that. We won't mm. see like what yeah. happened to Rust's community where there's 12 year olds freaking out everywhere and everyone's screaming into their mic because no one's talking to each other in the first place. Hmm. That's yeah. That's what I I mean. Like this is the it's a very like you've got to be really careful though because it's it's so easy when 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 you've got something like this that is such an open concept and it's actually down to the player and their decision of how they play it. Unfortunately, people that play No Man's Sky and enjoy it right now are not 
gonna likely to be the same people that would yeah, join in yeah. the game after that. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't play it in that way because it is, it, yeah. that, it is two sides of a coin that you're appealing to completely with those aspects. Utterly. If it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a really vast difference between those that play Ark Survival on PvE and those that play Ark Survival in PvP. And like, that's an absolute truth, you know what I mean? And that's, that, I, I, I do fear that a little bit because it could split the community right down the middle if it's not yeah. done in the right way, if it's not handled properly, it could, it could be, be a massive division. And that would be horrible because we have got it something would. special with it. What I was thinking with PvP, it might go kind of like Starbound and Terraria, where you need to enable it to do it with other people. You can still be in the same universe, but if someone just wants to play chill, okay, go and find someone else. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, um, in order to prevent people just dipping out in combat, you could have, like, a 10 minute cooldown from activation and disabling. That's why I was thinking, yeah. and I don't know if uh, I said it well. I, 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 I don't know, I said it at the start of it, but I think that they might implement it in kind of a lore based way. Like, we still have unused rooms in the anomalies so i was thinking maybe they would implement it in a way that it's another simulation you go into an anomaly go through the door and all of a sudden like you're back during the war between the geck and the viking and the corvax and you get to experience the war in that way and that's kind of like pvp you know you all choose a side yeah, yeah you can each pick yeah. a faction and like i'm still of the mind that they have to kind of funnel people together um for pvp to work because that's of what and the yeah. scale of the game, definitely. And, there, there is an alternate mode. Sort of mechanic there. Oh yeah, sorry. But if it is oh, an geez. alternate mode like that, like a simulation or something like that, they could like scale down whatever they have. It doesn't have to be as vast as universe, like because it could be like a yeah. separate entity within the server. You know. To be honest, I think that's why Sean Murray isn't worried about multiplayer because of how vast this universe is. Like I've never. In all the hours I've played this, I've never just randomly bumped into somebody else. I've <clears> always <throat> gone through a portal to either meet someone or a portal where the farm is. <coughs> so I think the the people that are worrying that they're gonna like that because I understand what they mean. Like you've got these solo players that do want to just go around and play on their own and chill, and they're worried that they're going to be getting constantly attacked by other players that are just trolling them or trying yeah. to kill them, but you've got to remember the scale of the game and like the amount of different galaxies there are, the odds of running into somebody randomly is very slim, yeah. and I think the to be have that experience to be, like for instance, say like you warp into a system, and you're like going around a system and then it flags up the same way it flags up about a uh, bounty incoming. So it says something like, I don't know, um, PvP player incoming or something like that. Mm. And to have that happen after 100 hours of gameplay, completely random, all of a sudden you jump into this system and it's like, oh my god, there's somebody else here. Like, what do I do? What's going to happen? Are they going to attack me? Maybe I'll speak to them. Maybe we'll actually be friends and join up and traverse the rest of the universe together. I think that is what Sean Murray is hoping yeah. for. Yeah. That's what I am a little bit scared about, as well as being really excited for at the same time. Well, I feel it's like... About it's, if... it's kind of how it's implemented, because if it's done in the wrong way, it could literally turn into... Day, like because Daisy was the dream, right? When Daisy was, was yeah. released, it was like so you put people in a situation where they had the choice. They could either attack people or they could be friends. And it gave you the option to play as a hero or villain. And mm. even though it was much more fun to play as a hero, the vast majority of people that played that game spawned in, went to the nearest building, found a gun, and sat on the top of a hill and sniped people for the rest of the time. There was no yeah, yeah. interaction, and I've, that is my fear for No Man's Sky. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I feel I'm, like uh, to stop that, we'll have to make uh, co-op much more worthwhile. Because like with Daisy, yeah. if you work with another person, you can get the same loot in like a third of the time. But if you kill someone and take their loot, you get it instantly. So I feel like with No Man's Sky, going back to like the player-created items, 
you'll have to have something that you need someone else to work with you to do something. Like say some terminal that requires two people to work with to get a late game. This is why equipment. this is why I think yeah, the multi cruise ships cool. that's why I think the multi cruise ships mm -hmm. is gonna be similar to Star Trek Bridge Crew because you'd have a captain, you'd have, you know, an engineer, you'd have and all of you have to work together to actually go anywhere. Like literally. Yeah. yeah. You'd have to work together. But to you go reckon anywhere. that if you know? if it is multi crew ships that they won't make it so you can fly on them like fly them on your own, you would literally have to have another group of players with you to be able to I think it would be a good mechanic it. to put in because then it gives you a reason to work together, doesn't it? Like yeah. we've all been saying. Ultimately yeah. that's that it needs to be more rewarding to work together than not if you're gonna convince people that generally don't work together to do that and for everyone to kind of get the experience that we all have at the moment. Yeah, you can think you've of got it like two um... people from Call of Duty and Fortnite and you've got to suddenly put them in a space where instead of like calling them a noob and teabagging them, they've got to try and actually <laughs> develop a friendship of some sort. You know what I mean? But yeah. ultimately that's yeah, what yeah, it is, yeah. if you see what I mean. Like when you look at it from the realist perspective, that's kind of what No Man's Sky's tr gonna try and do. And like, that's really intriguing. I think the only way you can do that is to have, like you say, terminals or the ships or some kind of mechanic where it kind of forces that interaction. It makes it more rewarding than being a dick. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Hippie Weirdo has just messaged into my chat saying, uh, I think more people are going to work together and the universe is so massive, I think when you meet someone, you're going to be happy. Yeah. Or oh, too yeah. happy. I think he means like too happy to actually want to kill yeah. someone. To I feel like into a meeting place. someone with Next, I'll kind of treat it like I meet a stray dog. It's like something that I'm excited yeah. because maybe this dog is friendly, but I'm also cautious because maybe they'll try and bite my hand off when I go and yeah. pet them. Maybe it'll be a companion I'll have for the rest of my journey, or maybe it's somebody that's going to end my journey. Yeah. Exactly. No, trust mechanics. Um, yeah. Just uh, briefly, revolutionary in the chat, uh, in the Discord chat now, not the, not the stream chat, uh, says, Ad yep. Aiden, if the trains have fixed known destinations, aren't you setting yourself up to be ambushed when you come out of the war? Exactly, and oh, I covered that in the discussion. Point. Yeah. And it would bring all players together, including those who want PvP, and then it would allow for people who want to play PvP to hire up, like, be hired by the uh, civilization to guard the trains. Okay. And then yeah. they can still play No Man's Sky exploring around, but because they're playing like a policeman role, they'll get yeah. into combat more. So it could help with griefing, right. where those players that want this constant PvP could find that. And I also came up with the red zones, in case people didn't want to be the good guys. There would be places, like a certain star system that the, uh, the hub claims is a red zone. Mm -hmm. And in that place, they encourage PvP. There are no restrictions to just shooting someone if, it goes, if they go into there. So if you want to have a duel with someone, you both warp into a red zone, you duel it out in there. And it would, it would just I be like a way to remove creeping. Uh... Like lawless, lawless um, areas of space. That's, good. that's really sci fi as well. That's like every sci fi yeah, film is. ever is to have kind of areas of space that are like really naughty, you know? So you could go See, there and there'd be like black markets and things like that. And I think that, that yeah. all of that, again, kind of ties back into like being able to tell stories and, and the game being able to tell like stories that it doesn't intend to. Now, yeah, yeah. Those are those are really yeah. intriguing tools. Like right now with No Man's Sky, like the greatest story I have. I went on to one planet, and it was really pretty. That's that's like the greatest story I have. But with yeah, with all of the new systems that I'm thinking about, I could go into a system and there would be a giant battle going on between people, and then I just snuck my way in and I attacked both sides and I got a ton of blueprints from it. Yeah. 
or you found yourself in a hostile situation and you met this guy and uh, that he helped you and you went and got this rare item together and because of this journey you became mm -hmm. friends and, and now you're traveling to a new location because you find out there's another guy that needs help and you know what i mean and yeah like they, no, i completely agree like with the you. hero and the villain kind of both sides of those things can be told really really well using mm -hmm. no man's sky as a stage for those experiences and you know i would so be i would love to watch like a series of that kind of thing on youtube you know what i mean like it from both yeah. perspectives well, I'd watch kind of the, the baddies that wanted to go in and kind of like raid people and stuff like that, and that was their kind of premise. But I'd also really like to watch the heroes and the, you know. Yeah. Did you guys yeah. ever watch the the, uh, the Ogs cast when Minecraft was first starting out to be a thing? Yeah. On YouTube. Sure I did. Okay, yeah, I they did. had a series uh, called Shadow Visterfell. It was a completely scripted Minecraft series, and they. It was kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but in Minecraft. And I think with Next, with multiplayer, we could see a ton of that popping up on YouTube, where it's like they're telling this story of, say, a group of galactic traders who are just trying to get by, but they keep like fighting pirates and getting into all of these mishaps through yeah. the game. Yeah. That's what see, I, I just, I just thought then, um, like, just from you two speaking, it made me think that, like, for a feature for when you're in space in your ship. For instance, say like you do warp into a system and all of a sudden you're getting attacked and you're trying to run or, <coughs> or you know, somebody's following you jumping through systems. A feature where you could go um, like click down on the D-pad um, or bring up your little hotbar and it'll have an SOS beacon that will reach, for instance, like 20,000 light mm -hmm. years in a circle radius that when you activate that anybody that is near in a system nearby whether a pirate or their galaxy like map someone, and no. it will show up and it will you'll see like our oh, uh, so and so mm -hmm. sending out an sos signal this is a system at the, that they're at and you can jump there or message them and you will be able to be like um i can offer assistance and then if you really wanted to you could actually add um like, oh god, what they're called now, mercenaries into it, where they'll message you back and be like, okay, I'll come and help you, but it's going to cost you 20,000 units and for every enemy. I feel like um, they could revamp the defense shit to do that, because right now, late game, there's no reason to it. I'd rather get the trophy than using it, uh, making a defense shit. I feel like yeah. they could just completely revamp it to work with that system. And they could, uh, you guys know FTL? The game? FTL. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like when you run out of fuel, you turn on the distress beacon and anybody could come, whether they're a pirate or someone who willingly wants to help you out. And if you are playing as a pirate in No Man's Sky, you could just pop that up whenever, wait for someone to be friendly and try and help you, and then you can just spawn camp them in the system. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose mm. that, um, but it would see I don't know where I don't know whether I would like that I would definitely I don't know if I would like the whole trapping thing but it would open it up either way it's like the two sides of the coin really no matter yeah if it's implemented at all people will use it to attract other players well, it has to be balanced yeah, I'd, you know it does yeah totally like, I have no doubt that no matter what they do there are going to be those people who will Try to somehow <laughs> try to exploit it, or you know, mm -hmm. try and camp somewhere. Yeah. Right, and but then I suppose adding a feature like that, it, it it does give them that option to camp because at the moment you don't know if somebody's in a system or not mm -hmm. unless you um unless you actually like they've actually discovered it and first and you think yeah, oh, okay, speaking of that, be here. Speaking of discoveries, I think that they're going to need some way to hide discoveries. Because if you make a discovery, everyone can see that system. And if anyone's looking for your base, they'll just look for a high density amount of discoveries located on one yeah. star system. Like my base, right now, every single star system except for the blue ones, because I don't have the Theta and I only just got a freighter, are discovered. So if anyone wants yeah. to come by, raid all of my living glass and liquid explosives, they can. <laughs> so I, yeah, I feel like. If you want to hide from pirates, just don't make any discoveries, really. 
Uh, so, uh, mm. I think um, uh, Infinite. Should yeah, we do yeah. the screenshot showcase and then see if we can get some other people on? If that's okay, because I just um, feel that we're, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you uh, if you want to do that, that's fine. I mean, if if, if you got any people who um who have said that they want to well, come like, on, well, like you and know, whoever whoever feels like they've said their piece, because there's um hippie still in the chat, like you know, um in, in yeah, the waiting he, room. He and I feel I feel me. guilty. Like we're only trying to pull on two people at a time because there's two hosts. Which makes it a fucking. Oh, dude, I'll yeah. make some space for um, people. That's no problem at all. It's been boring. Sure? It, it's fine. I'm doing like, something yeah, in the yeah, background yeah. right now. I can just pop off. It's, it's all good. Oh, uh, now we're getting now we're getting like the overly uh, like you know nice people. Like <laughs> we're going to end up with no <laughs> viewers or no talkers. Or no, no, like it's that. no drama, man. Honestly, um, I've got some stuff to do and stuff. But yeah, it's been a, a real pleasure to come on and chat with you guys and like to find some oh, ideas and hear. It really uh, has. And stuff. So yeah, yeah thank you so much for having me, man. It's no been problem. a pleasure. Thank you for coming. Pleasure to have you on. Not a problem. Honestly, so. yeah. Catch you like, later, like guys. I said, it's amazing to have Sean Murray here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I don't know about that. This is like not gonna let it go, are we? <laughs> yeah, no, no it's not gonna. It. I think that's the problem. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I can get now. away from it. <laughs> oh, I'm such a, I am such a noob. I really find it awkward to um, <laughs> leave these discords. Why oh, is that? Just, just a hang up button. Actually, I'll troll you out, will I? I left, if, um, if, oh, yeah, be I left <laughs> Cobra's stream yesterday in the best and most fashionable way of my Discord crash and I was kicked out of the subcast. So that was wonderful. Oh, wounded. I don't know where I'll put you though, Semtex. Like you're oh, gonna have to find uh, a hang up button yourself, man. <laughs> yeah, I am trying, but I don't know. Oh, It'll be phone. at the bottom left near your name. Are you on your phone? Yeah, I am trying, I am trying. <laughs> I don't know. Can there I actually there we go. Up? I find the right one. Sorry, because I was using Discord in the background, like going through the chat rooms at the same time, and couldn't find my way back to the menu. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. Mate. <laughs> yeah, a wrong button. Wrong no button. Guys, it's, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'll catch you again. Yeah. No problem. Talk to you later. Sometime. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Love yeah, thank you for again. coming on. Oh, um, man. Um, Alpha, just um, a shout out to you, man. Honestly. Really, really thank you so much for sorting us out with that um, channel art. That's really amazing. I've got it up. It's, um, I'm really, really impressed. So, yeah, thank you for your help and time. Uh, no really problem, Santa. That. You're a legend. Pleasure, man. <laughs> Wicked. Here, man. Awesome, guys. Thank Catch you. you again. Bye, bye. Yeah, definitely. Bye. bye. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so now we have to go hunting for people. No, we're going to take a break uh, to do the screen uh, for the showcase. Okay. So when we're... I was in, thinking... Oh, sorry, you we'll, go. We'll pull you back in um, after we're... Done. Like you know, we'll pull you and Heavy Weirdo back in to the chat if you want. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll I... just throw you into the waiting room with him, so you can both discuss things while we take our break. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Trying to okay. come up with some good topics cool. and you know, okay. yeah. chat about. We shouldn't be too long, so. guys. It has been a wonderful time. Uh, no problem. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. It's it's brilliant to actually have people um mm -hmm. so excited to come on with this being their first. Uh, at first podcast, so yeah, it's amazing so far. I love uh, the No Man's Sky community. It's just so friendly. I think everyone it really is, is. Everyone enjoys it. We're all cut from the same stone, as they say. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So take care, man. See you soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. It's it's been wonderful, guys. I'll still be on no too problem. later. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, I'll try and catch the next stream. Well, no, this is still a stream. We're just taking a 10 minute break or so, or maybe like 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I meant like catching yeah. it on there. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, no problem, dude. All right. No worries. I should be on for the next 10 minutes. We'll see you guys. It's been wonderful. All right, talk to you Thank soon. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you. Yeah. Yay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, have you got yourself muted and everything? Um, I have not.
Cool. So welcome back, everybody. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, just a short break there. We hope you enjoyed uh, some of the screenshots as well. I know we certainly had a lot of fun looking through them. And compiling the video. Uh, yeah, yeah the, all the so, screenshots are gone there uh, in the in the Discord. But if people are interested, if you want to check back, I made a, I think it was 10 minute video of that. So, you know, that'll be uploaded during the week. So anybody want to download that yeah. can. And uh, anyone who's got any new screenshots that they'd love to upload to have on their, uh, on their showcase and playing playing in the corner whilst we're uh, <clears throat> we're on chat make sure to join our discord yep um and yeah just go down to the screenshot showcase section and post any of your uh, any other pictures in there and we'll look through them and we'll be picking them and and putting them in in next week's next week's stream yeah from tomorrow morning onwards because yeah it's locked at the moment <laughs> Yeah. And it's, I have to give it give it time before we unlock it again, like you know. So tomorrow morning, be cool. Uh, yeah. So we'll be drag uh, people in. Yeah. Um, uh, who did you say we've got at the moment? Well, the longest um, person that's been waiting here is Hippie Weirdo. Is Hippie yeah. Weirdo? So yeah, let's let's have him in first. Cool. Let's drag him in here. Hello. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? Hippie Weirdo? Are you with us, Hippie? <laughs> Have you got a malfunctioning microphone? He's been kicked again. Yeah, he's jumped out. Uh, <coughs> See if um Urban? Yeah. Alright, let's try pulling him try pulling Hippie yeah. again. Hippie? Are you with us? Are you there, Hippie? Um If you're having issues with something, maybe check your um your actual settings in discord and, and if you don't sure want to you... come on the show but just want to wait there like you know put yourself on mute so that we know that you don't want to actually come on or talk yeah yeah that's fine um okay he doesn't want to come on and talk uh so yeah no worries let's try... so yeah let's uh let's get her my... um, um, what's going on man hello there how are you doing hey great to have you on wait what you're on the show now. <laughs> Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> as Cobra, as Cobra would say, you've been wrapped in. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Just been dropped into the deep end, more like it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's go with it then. Um, so like what I was talking about with them guys is um the idea of like survival being more integral and i kind of talked about this with semtex last night is like i think that there needs to be more of a reason to stay on different planets and stuff and like actually look for resources and things and that's why i'm a huge proponent for um like a live trade market because i think that it brings in a um it brings in an element that requires people to like large groups of people to almost stay stagnant but also have to explore and look at different markets and stuff like that hmm. it, yeah that's interesting i could think of one way that that would be that would work really well uh at the moment we've got like everything split up and like there's there's i think three different rare resources that you can only get from different star systems with different colors but in the way that you're saying it if there was like some sort of a connected galactic trade and it was more personal in that nature then we could have people that could actually sell those rare items without the people needing to actually go to those <clears throat> systems themselves yeah and and like that's what i said because like that the thing is is like i feel okay i feel like if you drop I feel like if you drop most players into uh, a planet, like whatever, whatever, you know, system, the, the majority of us could, you know, find a ship, get resources and whatever. And if, you know, if we build a base, I'm sure everybody knows how to farm. Yeah. I'm sure everyone on the yeah. 20 million farm. And it's like... If the if the market doesn't fluctuate for you know wants and needs and stuff like that, then I don't see how um, there's going to be 
how do I put this? If I if we just sit on a planet, like I can just farm the resources indefinitely, get off for a couple hours, get back on, and now those resources are back, or I can grow those resources that I need. If there isn't a market, then it's like, well, what's going to happen? Every big group of people, they're going to set up a base and they're going to do floating glass and circuits, yeah. and then everybody's yeah. rich. Huh. So what you're saying is to actually have a fluctuating a fluctuating galactic market where if there is so much of like living glass for instance being sold in one system then the price of that drastically drops so that people can't make themselves rich yeah because because um i'm have either one of you played eve online at all no i have played eve so then you know how that market is you know? Yeah. Like, you know how it fluctuates so wildly and how, yeah. you know, giant galactic battles just can completely destroy the entire market. Like, what was it? Was it four or five years ago that, like, it was literally, it was like $2 million worth of, like, invested ships and resources in that game, like, completely messed up the market because there was, like, a, a giant galactic battle. And it's like, I remember like coming back to it at that point and it was just like things that you know would make you you know if you could get if you get the resources you get the planetary you know mining stuff done then it's like you could just you know buy whatever ship and then those things just drop and they were worth nothing yeah and it's like i think that because then like then what that requires is, is it requires people to actually and it requires people to be a part of the greater idea because even if you're not playing pvp then you still have a f an effect even if like because it, it's one server and i'm assuming that if they do go multiplayer they'll probably do it like gta and have a passive mode and like it'll just become invisible to the yeah, yeah. And whatever it's not gonna be a big deal but um but then that means that even what you're doing still has an effect on the greater economy that's happening because then it's like okay fine you're in pve what's this what's to stop anyone from going into pve pve you know just farming and farming and farming and farming and it has no effect on the market it's kind of like what it is now you just do whatever and then you take that yeah. and go into pvp and now you have you know a galactic destroyer floating, floating around and it's like well you know how are you really trading that forward no, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean, like trying to balance it out for, for all the players across PvE and PvP. Yep. And making it so that it's not quite as easy to make yourself, like, as powerful as everybody else. Yeah, so yeah. kind of balance it in a way that people are liable to, you know, kind of scrape by for what they can get, instead of making it so easy to obtain units, for instance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, then we're looking at something kind of like where they'd implement a way that you'd have to actually pay for some resources, like resources that could only be obtained by paying for it, that you will need on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Like, and and like the thing that one of the biggest things that I think. W <laughs> Sorry, this is what happens when we get HD. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get excited and then you start to stutter. Okay. Um, one of the things that I think that that also will help is it it even if because the thing that I don't want to happen is okay so you, you have a PVE community and then you have a PVP community yeah like and then it's just splitting the entire community and then people are gonna you know form their groups or whatever but then it's like to what level of pve is that going to be is it going to be pve like what it is now where i'm just rolling around by myself and there's nobody there or am i going to be rolling around with other passive players and stuff like that and i think that like there's so much i guess i shouldn't say it like this this is i feel like i hear a lot of people talking about all the negatives of pvp but i think that like if there's more in implement oh my god i can't talk if there's more things <laughs> people drawn to the light of like okay like you know even though you're playing pbe you're you're you know having an effect on the greater thing that's going on and even though you're not in the giant galactic battles and stuff like that like i'm, I'm personally excited for you know giant galactic battles of people you know just i mean flying ships into other ships and just you know 
causing you havoc. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the things that I would love to see implemented into it because, like, you can get the um, the conflict scanners and that, so that you can see the conflict of of a system and like you'll have some conflicts that are at war but then when you go into those systems it does not let seem like a system that's at war like you, you've got freighters there and you've got a couple of pirates fighting but that isn't a yeah. war no that's that's just a small that's little a squabble <laughs> yeah 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 exactly Skirmish. it's like a spat it's yeah. it's whereas if you spawned in like if you walked into a system and you get there and you all of a sudden come in and there's broken parts of ships flying everywhere and you've got these huge freighters going at it little starships flying around shooting at each other trying to destroy the other freighters that would be amazing to see like especially if it was unexpected so you didn't have the scanner and you just jumped into a system yeah. hoping to find something and all of a sudden you find this huge galactic or system war going on between two factions and it's like oh damn like do I run? Do I side with one faction? Well, I, I think that'd be something side, brilliant to implement into it. Destroy them both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. How, how are you going to take on it? And that doesn't just have to be PVE, um, like NPCs fighting. Mm. If you was to jump into somebody's like colony that they've built over systems, and they've got somebody else coming in to fight them. And try and take over their system yeah you could then jump into that system and end up seeing two actual players a proper pvp war going on between two separate hubs that are trying to take over one another sort of thing like and i mean like if you haven't seen or even played Eve, like i i would highly suggest like go and watch a go and watch an actual like eve battle and how just it's just complete and utter chaos. For, yeah. yeah. It's just insane. And it's like, that, like that's the thing is, I think that, and I, I've said this in multiple chats, I think that if we've gotten to this, sorry, I'm trying to like cover a whole bunch of points. Um, I feel like if we've trusted Hello Games up to this point, like even, and I said this last night, like I think everything that happened, like, you know, people getting pissed off about the portals and the portals not working and people wasting a bunch of time doing the portals and stuff like think about how different things would be right now like i might not even be on the stream i might have never met semtax i might have you know never been on cobra tv's you know sub chat or subcast yeah it's like like things would be a lot different if like you know they release the game like how it is now and then we we're going into next instead it's like things might not even you know, there might be even bigger channels that are more influential on, you know, No Man's Sky that are maybe more toxic and more willing to cause issues and grief the game and whatever. And it's like, I, I think it's perfectly fine. And I mean, the one thing that I think that people seem to, I mean, I'm not saying this is the rule, but it kind of seems like, oh, well, you know, there was a couple of bad things that happened in the past, but it's like, well, it happened for a reason. Mm. Those points portals were were assets that were in the game and they were set there dormantly and just because we didn't know what they did or what they were used for and couldn't figure them out doesn't necessarily mean that you know they didn't have a use i mean play obviously later on we found that it's like you know i was making a comment about how those uh like the uh space uh, those like planets like the barren planets the forsaken planet stuff like that like i think that those were either used for something and they're just important asset, they're a structure asset, or they're gonna be used for something. Because I, I don't remember when I first started playing this game, I don't remember ever seeing those planets, Forsaken planets and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people have, um, have got their theories about the, the rings that you can find on those planets. Um, on like the exotic planets and that and they've got the little bit of law law written into them but a lot of people have said you know that you can fly through the rings so i know some people have said they reckon it'll be um it'll be like a galactic portal uh, a galaxy portal where you will actually be able to take your ship jump to a different galaxy so if you've gone to the second galaxy you can jump through that portal take your ship with you and go back to your previous galaxy or to a different one maybe or like what you was probably going to say then alpha yeah. um 
at the moment going through a portal you can't take your ship with you but what's to say that if you go and find an exotic um, an exotic planet and find one of those rings you will be able to fly through with your ship and you will take your ship with you it could and it be in a like totally different part brave. of the galaxy <laughs> Oh yeah, go I thought, on. I thought, I thought you took a break there, and I thought you were finished. <laughs> I need to breathe at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm messing. No, like, yeah. uh, like, if any of you has watched Stargate, uh, the, um, they've got like Stargates that are on the surface of planets, but they also have floating ones that are out in space. If yeah. they had that, we'd be able to like traverse space a lot quicker as well. Like, we have anomalies, we have black holes, but what if we had like portals like that like you know just floating out in space yeah. and we had like a dialing device within our ship yeah so you can input coordinates yeah. in your ship and then when you fly through that portal you land up it takes you to those coordinates yeah like, yeah that that'd be a really cool thing to implement into it because i know another thing and it was actually something that um i actually thought was really good uh oh, two seconds uh add a couple of messages into chat I've got Chaos Control saying, um, I wonder if there will be race domination, like you can help, say, the Corvax take systems in real time. Yeah. So I think by that he means, like, um, like you'll be able to see on the galactic map, maybe, that there's um, Corvax are trying to take over a Viking system, and you can actually jump into that system and, and assist the Corvax in taking over the system or assist the Viking in protecting mm -hmm. a system maybe would be a pretty oh, um, be cool as long as they had an option be cool to be feature. by yourself like a nomad destroy them both take all the yeah shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you do it the way that you do it with pirates and freighters now oh, like yeah. if you attack the pirates then the the ships from the freighter will attack you assist you in oh, fighting yeah. the pirates but then if you f attack the freighter or the little ships they all turn against you so it will be that sort of thing yeah. Like, added into it, maybe. Oh. Would be nice. Seen, I guess, okay, hit, hit a couple points. I think it would be cool if those, like, space anomalies and the Forsaken Planets were, like, almost like the Death Stars. They're just giant friggin' ships. War machines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like they're destroyers. And it's like, that would be sick. I mean, that's probably hardcore wishful thinking but we'll move on from that point um and then uh, i what i think would be cool is if you could actually choose between the three factions yeah and then like the numbers are the no is the nomad group yeah so it's like you know like and then you know your ship or you know whatever products you're making manufacturing or whatever like you get a boost for you know making photons or missiles or whatever and you know, if you're better at being a Corvax, then your ta your suit tech is better. Or mm -hmm. if you go rock with the Gex, then like you know, you're getting better ship mods and stuff. <sighs> yeah, yeah that would be a pretty cool way of adding it. So actually, sort of picking a faction and a side also gives you these passive bonuses as well as like being protected by them or having them assist you if you're in a Corvax system and you you're aligned with a Corvax. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, I, I, I like that idea. Um, Chaos Control says he's worried about the controls and hopefully it's not stuck in a third person mode like Star Wars Battlefront. Pixel Eye says, is possible along with Galactic War against Atlas or whatever has trapped us in the simulation. I don't think they'll put push it so that it'll be a total third person mode. Because we already have first person, they would just be doing away with all the work they had. You know? Well, yeah, and I, I, what, so it, I guess I wouldn't. Oh, go on. I, I wouldn't really like a, a strict third-person mode, but I, I could see, I can see merits, because I mean, the thing, the thing about third-person is like it's so easy to, I guess cheat's not the right word, but it's so easy to just like make it work to your advantage. Like, look at Arma. You can look above giant fences when third-person. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, because uh, I, I, I play quite a bit of PUBG, and like that's one of the. Um, uh, uh, that's one of the. Um, the bonuses to doing third person, because you can literally look behind the wall. 
and they won't see you looking around there, but you can see everything that they're doing and then jump out on them. Exactly. Um, I've also got Spellcheck in the chat with me saying, Howdy, how are you going Spellcheck? Great to have you here. Um, and I've also got UK Gamer 84 saying, Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, oh yeah, so far, so far so good, yeah. <laughs> Can't complain. Couple of mess-ups. We've had, um, yeah. Yeah, it's our first one. We'll we'll work out all the kinks eventually. No, I think I think so far it's been good. We've had um, we've had Semtex on here. Um, we've had Aiden. Currently got. We, yeah, we've had Aiden on here. Uh, at the moment we have Urban Murderer yeah. or Murder here. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <yeah. laughs> Bit of a difference. Yeah, there. well, one one is yeah, like yeah. admitting to something. <laughs> the other is just telling you, like, you know, that he sees something, you know? Like pointing out something, you know? Uh, oh, yeah, that's an old urban murder, and then, you know, <laughs> vastly different things. <laughs> uh, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to change, change it real quick. I'm going to interview the interviewers. Yeah. What? Okay, yeah, go ahead. With, um, how would, okay, let me, let me pose it this way, it'll be better. How do you feel about on ground conflict? Like, if you're in a planet grab, and yeah, like, what do you think about people shooting fucking lasers at each other or something? What so like, um, like on ground conflict between other players, so PvP or adding a PVE aspect to it? Yeah, because the, the reason why I ask is because I was thinking about this. What happens when I mean, because like right now, you can take a portal to anybody's base, go to their base, yeah, farm their stuff, whatever. What's gonna stop you know a competing faction that's trying to take over, <coughs> from hopping on a planet and stealing all your farm? Well, like, I have an idea for that. Um, basically, it'll probably work the way that um, all buildings work now, currently. Which is when you come in, you're basically disarmed. You know, you cannot fire anything indoors. So it'll probably become a no fire zone when you're in your base. Plus, if they don't have the permissions, and if you're in a current faction, uh, like the the game or the building, the particular building, your base, i.e., would recognize you as a part of the faction, so allow you in. But it won't allow any other faction. Unless, yeah. of course, you want right. to go in and cause some trouble, you'd have to go through some defenses. So they'd probably have some steel doors, or the doors would be like steel doors, so you'd have to actually Maybe work. Maybe automatic turret? Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't well, see them doing that, because No Man's Sky is or... very passive. See, everybody's thinking of PvP in a, in a full-on PvP kind of setting. But you have to yeah. think of PvP when it's, you know, put into No Man's Sky. It's completely different. Yeah. So they're going to do something different. They've said that it's going to be different. But everybody's ignoring that and they all think that it's going to be traditional PvP. It's not, you know? Just like the multiplayer wasn't traditional. It's not ever going to be traditional, you know? <laughs> so, I don't know. No, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And it, that's sort of what I hope from it as well. I don't want it to turn into this mm. traditional PvP. <coughs> I um I do want something a bit different with it, like, and I expect something a bit different with it, like you said, with the way that Sean Murray talks about it. And... So yeah, like I, I do agree that it's still going to have its PvP elements, but implemented in a, a different style to the, the typical. Yeah. True. Uh, good question, though. Very good question. I kind of hope that I'm going to be. The <laughs> Or the group, I want to say, I kind of hope that there's ground combat because I just, I think it would be so freaking epic if, like, all right, let's go down fantasy lane. We'll go down our urban murders fantasy lane for a second. You know, you're sitting on your planet with, you know, uh, we'll say clan, I guess, just as a generic term. You're sitting yeah. on this with your clan, and it's like, all right, some invading faction comes in and they're trying to take over. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to use my terrain ma manipulator to freaking make a trench, and now I'm going to defend what we are calling the capital of the planet and stuff. I just, I think that would be epic. Like, I know No Man's Sky isn't anywhere, like, near that, and I don't expect them to be, but it's just, I don't see how, because I, I get what you're saying about the no-fire zones. Yeah. How the, 
then my question would be how then would you account for somebody strafing you know your base uh what do you mean by that term now sorry i'm just uh, not pvp -esque, you know? <laughs> strafing is like um like flying over and shooting at a building okay you know what i mean yeah well that is a very good point because it doesn't stop your guns and you uh on your ship from shooting when you go near a base. Yeah, but it doesn't destroy them either. No, but with PB with PvP being implemented into it, what's to say that they're not going to add that the ability to destroy for people's bases? Well, it's anybody's guess at this point, isn't it? You know, well, they might. There was, you know? there was something that there was something that I was thinking about a while ago because there was a lot of talk. I can't remember when it was and, and who it was who started it. Yeah. But there was talk of um, gamma systems, so like you, you, um, and like gamma tech, so like an, another level to like a higher rarity to the systems yeah. that we've got now. So what's to say like, because if that was real, I'm sure I saw it somewhere where they said that it was in the uh, yeah, it's actually it was in, in like the, the coding or something. Yeah. It's in the wiki, but are yeah. not used. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe they're gonna make it so that. PvP is only available in a gamma system. Yeah, but then they'd have to make it so that it's easily yeah. accessible because there's some people that probably want to join No Man's Sky and are probably going to try multiplayer right off the bat. So if you're talking about trying to implement something like that with a rare system, it'll have to be like from the get-go, like, you know, you, you go, you look at the orb, you accept the Atlas's guidance, shit like that. Or whatever they have now for that, like just iterations and numbers and crap yeah. like that. They'd want to, you know, maybe put a quest on, like you know, to get your first warp drive, and maybe yeah. it'd be less rare, you know. I, I'd say. Yeah, well, they, like it doesn't have to be an extremely rare system to come across. It could be something that's more common than like the other two or the other three rarer systems, like or the same. Hmm. It's as common as. The first planets or the first systems that you can go to. Okay. Well, it just gives people the choice. Then you don't want PvP. Fine, stay away from the gamma systems. You do want PvP. That makes sense. Go into yeah, them because if you have like, if you go onto the thing, it says current, like current, like you know, war, warring and stuff like that, or you know, yeah. torn or whatever it says in in the galactic map. It could just like say underneath, oh, PVE, you know, PvP. Yeah, PVE you know? or PvP. Like, yeah, it simply says that. So in a sense, it's sort of like if any of you have played RuneScape... No. Um, you basically have... You can go into... You'll have loads of different servers, and you can go into a server... Yeah. And you will have a PvP side, and then there will be a thing... Um, it's like a wall, like an actual wall in the game, and you go up to it, and you click on it, and then your character jumps over the wall. But when you're on the other side of that wall, you're in a PvP world then. Huh. So anybody can attack you, but you jump back over the wall, and nobody can attack you. <laughs> okay. So it's sort of be in the same sense as that. Like If you if you want to delve into the PvP side of it, like maybe you want to build a base in PvP, yeah. so that you'll have these people come in to try and attack you, and you can fight off against them, and you can build a whole faction in a, PV, a PvP area and then start PvP wars, but it doesn't mess up the game for the PvE players, for those solo players, or the players that just want to chill with their friends. Yeah. Huh. Makes sense. Another good point. See, they could do it in any number of different ways, you know? Yeah, they really and could. Still they, make they've got... The game, like, you know? Yeah. They could. That's the... God, that's the thing that just... And I know Semtax touched on this too. That's the thing that kind of chaps my ass about it is... Is like how focused like every time I hear someone say oh the E3 video the E3 video it's like that it's not even the same game it's not even the same game like if you compare all of your experiences the let's say the first two months that you played new or No Man's Sky when it first came out when it was just brand new and you compare it to the first few months or weeks of Atlas Rising or you know one of the other the uh, the other update like yeah. it's it's been a completely different game and the th it's like you can see if you look back to all the mechanics that were there in the original part of the game it's like you can see how 
things that were like, oh, that's the, I mean, for me anyways, I shouldn't say, not you, you personally, you royally. Um, you can see like, okay, this is like how the mechanics pro- progress to like where we're at now. Yeah. Like, you know. Huh. Well, there's so much room for growth as well. Um, it can only get better. Let's just put it that way, you know? <laughs> like, I, I, I never followed the hype at the start. I knew, like, the game, I seen the trailer and stuff like that, 2014. I knew about the game. I kept it in back burner, but I never actually bought it until 2017. And yeah. I was never let down by it, even by everybody's hate. I was just waiting, you know? I, I do that with all games. I wait. And I don't wait for anybody else's opinion. I just wait until I pick it up, until like I my schedule is is a little bit able to accommodate that because I play too many fucking games, too many consoles, and you know that's that's my side of it. But I was never let down. I never had my hopes up. I'm sure me and you have delved into this like not on a stream when we've been chatting, just yeah. like in Discord and that. And we've we've said that there's too many people take other people's opinions as fact before yeah. yeah as fact before actually playing the game in the cells like i i will read up reviews on games and um, movies series to watch and you know things like that yeah but if a game generally looks like it interests me even if everybody is hating on it saying how it is crap mm. i won't care i'll still play that game because to me it looks interesting yeah. And then if I play it and I love it, I couldn't care less whether everybody hates it. It's a game that I love. So to me, it means that the people that I'll end up finding or playing within this game will be the same as me. They will love the game as well. So, yeah. And I think that is what has created this amazing community within No Man's Sky. It's, it's the fact that because the game was a flop on release yeah. and a lot of people didn't like it and were hating on it, it sort of banded together all these people that love the game and saw the pen- potential in the game. Yeah. And it brought them together and cre- created these amazing communities. And nobody can say these communities aren't amazing because they truly are. Like Everybody's friendly, you can get so much help. They're, they're not toxic and poison like a Call of Duty yeah. community or, you know, something like that. Hmm. Like, I am genuinely like this is oh god, this is we're gonna get real sappy, real deep, real quick. <laughs> Come on, I think uh, we're able to handle it, we're men. Oh uh, yeah. I I genuinely oh god, I genuinely have never even in my real life have never met a group of people that are so helpful, respectful, and just like just um so welcoming as much as this community and it's not even like it's not that weird you know friendliness that you have to the cashier when you're buying something where you're like i don't really know you but yeah that fake friendliness sort of thing like yeah oh how are you oh yeah i'm fine and your car's on fire or something it's like (laughs) yeah (laughs) you want the petrol Uh, there's no petrol left you know (laughs) <laughs> it's like it's like yeah. a genuine, <laughs> it's a, it's like a genuine like kindness just from everybody. Yeah, it's like a genuine community where you can go and make genuine friends. It's not just something that you like like you say. It's not just something that you speak to a, a casual person you'll see in the shop. Mm. It's somewhere you can truly build a friendship with people like i mean how long have me and you been speaking alpha like God, since, since you offered to help me with discord about what two weeks yeah less yeah yeah and yet yeah, we've like he has helped me so much with setting up obs getting my computer ready explaining how to use it getting my like doing my youtube channel art helping with the logo um setting up my intro videos and like two weeks or less down the line and we've come this far to start in our own podcast and that is not something that you would get in any other community i promise you like you wouldn't get that and that's and that's the thing that, that's why like when people are like oh i i wish no man's sky would have been released now instead of when it was i don't i don't agree with that i'm i'm honestly 
I'm happy that No Man's Sky. Uh, this doesn't sound so shitty. I'm I'm happy that No Man's Sky and Hello Games kind of ha- you know got their dicks knocked in the dirt and like <laughs> shut up because I think that, like and genuinely genuinely I blame Sony for the missteps that Hello Games yeah. had because the second Sony because there was no promises that Sean had made about the game up until the point that Sony had backed Hello Games and started promoting the game and then it got super hyped and I'll admit I was friggin driving the hype train because I was yeah likewise and to that point like honestly this game even at, even in its early release went way past my expectations of what I expected it like I had to do that self-talk thing where I'm like all right it's a developer this game isn't going to be what they're saying it's going to be I'm getting hyped for no reason you know you got to do that like you know, yeah down but it's like the game I mean even in its early build it beat my expectations of what it was going to be I thought it'd be some like chinchy ass thing where like you go to war you go into you know you go to get into a planet and you're sitting at a loading screen for five minutes and then you don't want to leave the planet because you have to go sit through that loading screen again. Yeah. yeah. But oh. I think it's... Yeah, I, I, I remember when I first... Um, when I first said to one of my mates, like, yeah, there's this game coming out where you can literally get in your ship, uh, like, fly off, go straight into space, and then warp to another system and there's no loading screens mm. literally no loading screens at all and he was just no that's not possible like how are they going to do that there must be loading screens this isn't gonna, like it's not going to work yeah proven wrong like like you said even with the early release it still proved them wrong it was still an amazing game yeah. and I, to be honest i have to agree with you i'm i am glad it was released when it was i I feel sorry for Sean Murray and Hello Games for all the stick that they had and the hate that they got. But I do actually think that it is it's created an amazing game and community to stand up for the game. Yeah. Well if they rushed it out at the beginning and they said, Here you go, this is the feature rich complete thing, they would have missed something. And the fact that like you know they didn't have all that time to actually put it in has meant that we've gotten more than we're ever going to be able to get and it's still yeah. coming you know what i mean yeah. if if it all went out without yeah, a hitch it, it, we wouldn't be talking about this today the community no, would have come and gone and it. that's yeah. it you know? yeah definitely so i mean it's it's like semtech said in um in the xbox insider video sean murray said you know he, he ain't finished with this game he doesn't think the game's finished oh, yeah. He he's still got so much more that he wants to add to the game himself before he would truly no. say, and that just proves that you know, two years down the line they've had so much hate and stick and they're still pushing to get things out and they're still not ending it there. Like, yeah, they're still not giving up on it. They're still working on it and they still have plans for it and it's it's amazing. Like it really is. Like there was a there was a there's a specific comment and 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 this th- for me, not that it matters because I'm some lonely little peon playing video games, but it's like I genuinely respect Sean Murray as a person because it, like he didn't just like he heard the community we want multiplayer we want something that's a more inclusive or you know and and I can go hang out with my friends in their base and not see a floating orb. It's like, he said in the Xbox, he's like, you know, we have a very vocal community. And it's like, for him to say that, for him to make those comments, and I don't remember what else he said, but he made some other comments about how great the community is and how like patient we all are. It's like, for him to say that, that means that he recognizes at even the lowest level, because this isn't some developer at Bethesda that's like, well, for Bethesda, everyone likes their game, or Call of Duty, it's like, well, we're going to pump out a Call of Duty for the next six months anyway, so it doesn't matter if yeah. anyways. And it's like, no, like, they listen, like, uh, look at all, a lot of the stuff that they, they've implemented, like, you know, better farming mechanics and stuff like that, you know, port, yeah. stuff like that they're obviously listening and it's like that's what i don't know, i feel like people give hello games or sean murray enough credit where credit is due yeah definitely, definitely not definitely. Yeah. And it's it's why i think people shouldn't worry too much about multiplayer like don't let don't let it put you off 
it, the, I don't believe that it is going to be the biggest update to next. I don't think multiplayer is going to be the biggest thing in it. I think that's what they spoke about on Xbox. Yeah. Because that's what Xbox asked them. That was the first thing they said. Before you say anything else, Sean, will there be fully immersive multiplayer? That's what they said, and that's what they wanted to hear. So that's what he told them. But like you said, Sean Murray and Hello Games have been listening to us. They've been giving us what we want, and they've been respecting us for the wait that we've had to we've had to do. Yeah. So I think he'll know that not everybody wants multiplayer just for PvP. Like you said, some people do want it just to pop to their friend's base and see their friend walking around and you know chill in their base, fly up to their freighter and see how they've got their freighter set up. And so I, I have full full faith. In Sean, I really do. Like he's an amazing guy, and yeah, so I feel like he looks out for his community. Because I'm sorry, he'd actually be the bringer of bad news, but we're off for running for like you know nearly three hours now. No, that is so true. Um, we really have to wrap this up. We we can like if you wanted to say one more thing there, um, hippie weirdo, if you can, or do you want me to just call you hippie? Because I feel weird calling you weirdo. No. Urban. Ur you know urban, sorry. Fucking hell, I don't know what I'm doing. Man. <laughs> You're getting confused. I'm on the wrong screen. Chat. <laughs> yeah, chat is confusing me as well. Yeah. Sorry you know there, Urban. <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know, I guess the only thing I have to say is like, I I just don't think people should worry about it as much as, as they are. And to the point of, you know, Sean saying that there's going to be fully immersed multiplayer, I, I think that it's funny that even though he's saying that, everything that Sean has set up to this point, there's always been a little, you know, quick left turn. There's always been, all right, yep, all right, the basic idea is there's going to be multiplayer. There's always yeah. a little catch to it that makes it unique. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah and that's definitely what I believe is going to happen with Next. It's, it's going to bring a hell of a lot of uniqueness to No Man's Sky with PvP, with PvE, with the lore, with, with the story, with everything, yeah. I really do. Um, just before we end the stream, I've got Fusion, who's uh, been in chat, welcome and glad to have you here as well, Fusion. Um, and he has said, I wonder if the haters will start playing again with the copy they brought long ago, just for the purpose of trolling the multiplayer and stream it as I well. I think they definitely will. That's the answer to that yeah, one. I, I have no doubts that they will. I, I, there are people that are that sad that they would rather spend their time trying to ruin somebody else's game rather than actually exploring the game themselves and enjoying the beauty of it and trying to become a part of the community rather than fighting against it. Unfortunately, that's but, what they find fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. But yeah, each to their own opinions. But in that same retrospect, there's people in their community, and I've already seen people posting up like links to come join them, and they're actually going to be forming a little community to fight against sort of like a galactic police in a sense and they will be patrolling systems and and they will be fighting against these players which i also think is amazing because these these trolls yeah. they've actually created another little awesome community within errors to fight against them so they've sort of shot themselves in their foot yeah. like we we know what they're planning we know what they're gonna do Bring it on, I am. Oh, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> it's hilarious the the recruiting push from like some of these communities, and it's just like it's like Cobras, all these different channels. Like it's just so organic, and genuine. Like no, like this yeah. game. Like the majority of us, we're gonna be lifelong friends playing this game or other games or No Man's Sky 16 or whatever comes out next. <laughs> yeah, it's like, massive like, beards. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're we're all gonna be sat here with huge beers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not move from our spot, just rubbish around us. Oh yes. Well, thanks very much, Urban, for coming on. We really do have to end yeah. the stream because we've yeah, got real lives. To get back to, I know it's terrible. You know, I, you know, we could actually sit here for the next five hours talking about it. You know. Yeah, I could quite easily do yeah. that. <laughs> no. no, honestly, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on, Urban. It's uh, been great to have you on and, and hear your thoughts and, and ideas into No Man's Sky and Next. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for uh, having me on. 
yeah no problem, I mean, dude. more than welcome to come on come on again we will hopefully be doing this every sunday around the same time yeah. um yeah, yeah. And yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah. We might add in a little more segments. We have our uh, screenshot showcase. Um, watch yep. out for that. That video is going to be uploaded. In, well, it's actually going to be in a Dropbox link. So I'll put the link in um, into the Discord. And if you want to watch it, you can actually watch it from uh, the Dropbox, or you could download it alternatively, whichever one you prefer. If if your yep. if your screen ends up in there and you're really proud of it and you like it, you can take that down as well like, you know, yeah. uh, down it, 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 this is one of the reasons why me and alpha agreed on on sort of doing this and trying to start our own community within discord like we don't want to try and take fame away from any of the others that are doing the same thing that's the last thing we want we just want to be another part of this community that is trying to you know sort of help other people get out there and like i know some of the screenshots i've seen are amazing and i'd love to help show them to the rest of the world that are interested in seeing them yeah so yeah exactly okay so yeah thanks for having me on gents no problem dude no problem enjoy your thanks day everyone. and you know make sure yeah. you, you're you know active inside the discord as well we'll be in there too yeah definitely Definitely. Right on, man. And, like, I uh, don't like to preach, but, like, if you could spread the word of this show and try and get a name out there a bit, it'd, it'd be greatly appreciated. It really would. Um, obviously, this is our first our first podcast, so there will hopefully be many more to come. And it'd be great to pull a bigger audience from all different sides of gaming. It hasn't got to just be No Man's Sky. It can yeah, be we can do any game. Ranging from... Yeah plenty of other games and the topics of conversation can be plenty of other games like it's any game you enjoy <laughs> yep exactly same with the screenshots hasn't got to be just no man's sky if you've got some beautiful ones from horizon zero dawn god or of war. Um, i don't know god of war like uh, these other beautiful Far games Life, then whatever. throw them it throw them in there and we will show them and display them as much as we can yeah but let's all be serious no man's sky is life <laughs> <laughs> I will agree with you there. I will agree with you. It is. It is. We we agree. But the hype will die down at some point, and we we don't want to limit our community. Just to, if we can bring in more people from other communities, not every other community to every other game has everyone being an asshole in it. You do have some decent people in there. And it'd be great to pull them into a, a non-toxic community and, you know, spread the love in a sense, you know. Chaos Control says 27 video clips of waves. 27 video clips of waves. Yeah. These are the key for the waves. uplink password. Uh, okay, they're, they're saying that um, stuff is happening in the um, ARG. Yeah. Oh right, okay. So that's something for us oh. to get our teeth yeah, into well, after um, this show, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, well, I'll jump onto it on a Discord and have a look for yeah. it after after the stream. So thanks very much, yeah. Urban, man. Yeah, no problem. All right, peace out, gents. All right, talk to you later, peace man. Out. See you later. Um. Yep. Yeah, so that's going to be it for the uh, Infinite Pixels Talk Show. Thank you all for coming along. We do have a small outro video, so feel free to stay, yeah. listen, watch, and enjoy. And we'll all catch you in the Discord. See you guys. See you later. Thank you for watching. Thank you also to those that called in. If you didn't make it on but would like to call in. Join the Alpha Discord and follow the instructions on the welcome screen. Once you do that, leave your discussion topics and subjects in the Infinite Pixis Info section. We look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy your games. And enjoy your day. <laughs>